weird shit to your computer. But I don't think it should really matter. I think it'll be fine. And I'm hoping the volume won't be really loud. Please enter your name. My name will be... Um... Woolen. There we go. Hello, chat. Oof. Alright. Sorry, just quickly hello. Hello, everyone. What are we going to review? Nice doggos. When's Minecraft going to come back? Probably Monday or Tuesday. The server's been fixed. I'm going to voice search. Yeah, buckle up. If you want to hear me pretending to be someone else. On your Twitch app, your channel's offline. Is it offline for everyone else, or is it just for me? Why, well, and you'll regret You should call yourself Dad. I think that'd be a little bit creepy. I'm gonna check my video preview. It's working fine for me. Oof, there we go. Okay, it might just be your app's a bit broken. Anyway, do you wanna begin? Wollen, do you know the way? None of that here, all right. <laughs> I don't know who this character is, so I'm gonna have to try and think. This, this can be the woolen character. This can be the one that I has my voice, all right? Hello. That's what they say. I see an annoying girl running towards me from the distance, waving her arms in the hair, like... Waving her arms in the air, like she's totally oblivious to anything she might draw to herself. That girl is Sayori, my neighbor, and a good friend since we were children. This is the childhood friend character, I see. Is there a space bar I can do instead of clicking? There we go. You know, the kind of friend you'd never see yourself making today, but it just sort of works out that you've known each other for so long. I see the trope. I see the trope. We used to walk to school together on days like this, but starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waking up. Um, could you do something for me? Go to, go to Program Files 86 Steam Common Doki Doki and delete it. It will improve your experience. Just leave the folder open. Wait, you want me to leave the folder open? Does it- is it like an IARG or something where it like knows that you've got the folder open and then it puts naughty images in there? Or something. We're not doing that. I've heard there's nothing naughty that goes on, so that's why I'm alright with streaming it. Also, everyone else is streaming it, so it's fine. But, if she's gonna chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. Yeah, we're just gonna go, yeah. However, I just sigh, oh, and idle in front of the crosswalk. We call those crossroads in the United Kingdom, or the pavement, I'm not entirely sure. And let Sayori catch up to me. Oh! Oh, she's cute! Hello! Ah! Ah! That's the noise she makes. Alright. I overslept again. But I caught you this time. Alright, you did catch me, yeah. Well, maybe. Okay, both of- both of these people are me. I'm both this character and the other character. You'll have to forgive that we both have the exact same voice. It's just how it kind of sorted itself out in the end. Maybe. But only because I decided to stop and wait for you. He says it's actually quiet for me. Oh, she's pouting. That's wonderful. Eh! Oh, it's it's like the air, eh, isn't it? Eh! I can't do it. Eh! You say <laughs> You say like like you were thinking about ignoring me. Oh yeah, no spoilers, admins. If I so much as see a spoiler in the chat, you're welcome to time that man out for like 60 minutes or something. I don't know. That's mean, Willen. That's alright. Well, if people staring at you for acting weird, then I don't want them to think we're a couple or something. Oh, oh, fine, fine. Oh, you're all right with that. The weird like fish shirt. You did wait for me after all. Oh, I guess you don't have to have it in you to be mean if you don't want to. Whatever you say, sorry. Oh god, we're bully. I hope we're not bullying. Ee hee, told. We cross the street together and make our way to the school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commutes. By the way, Woolen, have you decided on a club to join yet? A club? I told you already, I'm not really interested in joining any clubs. I'd like to sit at home and play video games. I haven't been looking either. Eh? That's not true. That's the noise they make. He's done it. He's hit the noise. You told me you would join a club this year. Oh, she's not very happy. She's got her hands up in a very strange way. She's about to hit me. I'm not sh I'm sure it's possible that I did in one of our many conversations where I dismissively go along with whatever she's going on about. God, I'm an asshole. Holy shit. Sayori likes to worry a little bit too much about me when I'm perfectly content just getting on by the average while spending my free time on games and anime. What a- Is this like a portal into my real life? Holy shit. Sayori likes to worry too much about me. Aha. Uh -huh. I was talking about how I'm worried you won't know how to socialise or have any skills before college. I'm not gonna open the Doki Doki program file. These are not things that- uh, this is my- this is my first- well, this is actually my first run. This is not the kind of- on my first run I wouldn't know to open the program files, alright? So none of that. I was talking about how I'm worried about how you won't be able to learn to socialise or have any skills. 
I've already reread the thing twice. You can tell it's starting. Your happiness is really important to me, you know. We have a friend. Hello, friend. And I know you're happy now, but I die at the thought of you becoming a neat for a few days just because you're not used to the real world. Holy shit. She knows. She knows too much. This is creepy. You trust me, right? Don't make me keep worrying about you. Oh. Alright. Alright. I look at a few clubs if it makes you happy. I'm gonna make her so happy. No promises, though. No, I'm gonna join those clubs. I'm gonna fucking join the first club I can. Badminton? I don't care. Swimming? Will you at least promise me you'll try and be a little? Yeah. I guess I'll promise you then. Yay! That's the noise. She's also like a Pikmin. She probably goes yay in the same way. Why do I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl? It's apparently my character's a bumhole. This is not very nice. More than that, I'm surprised I even let myself relent to her. You get out of your bumhole, alright? Be nicer. I guess seeing her worry a little bit about me makes me want to ease her mind, at least a little bit. Even if she does exaggerate everything inside of her head. Okay, she's a worry much. I, I, that is the character. The other character is just me, isn't it? Like, it's not- I'm not me. The man behind the camera is all of you. Apparently the very rude bully. I'm this nice person who's trying to have a good time. The school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Oh, the Legend of Zelda sound effect. Thank you for the Team Fortress 2 sniper hat, Mike Wazowski from Monsters, Inc. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall and say the same thing twice in a row. I should probably stop doing that. Clubs. Sayori wants me to check out some clubs. I guess I have no choice but to start with an anime club. So help me god, if any of you do anything naughty via the donation messages, permanently banned, alright? It's not alright, no bullying, alright? I guess I have no choice. Hello! That's the noise she makes. This is me, I've decided this character's me, and the other character isn't me. We flipped. Sayori. Sayori must have come into the classroom while I was spacing out. I look around and realise I'm the only one left in the classroom. I thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you just sitting here and spacing out, so I came in. Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. You don't need to waste up for me if it's going to make you late for your own club. Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, I thought, you know? Know what? Well, that you could come to my club. Oh, you have a club, do you? Do I? I have a club, yes. Yeah! Yeah, we do have a club. We have a great club. There's no way I'm going to your club, says Twitch chat. Bullies. Eh. Eh. Meanie. Already the bullying has started in a video game. Sayori is vice president of the literature club. Oof. Not that I was ever aware that she had an interest in literature. In fact, I'm 99% sure she only did it because she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. Yeah, that sounds about right. Since she was the first one to show interest after the one who proposed the club, she inherited the title vice president. That's just starting to sound more and more like me. That said, my interest in literature is guaranteed to be even less. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to the anime club, says Twitch chat. Come on, please, says Woolen. Why do you care so much anyway? Well, she's doing the little little finger thing that goes like, oh, like that. We do that all the time, as anime girls. Yeah. I kind of told the club yesterday I would bring a new member. And Natsuki? Natsuki? Made cupcakes and everything. Eehe. Don't make promises you can't keep. I can't tell if Sora is really that much of an airhead, or if she's so cunning to have planned this all out. No, I'm an idiot. I'm just a plain idiot. Twitch chat lets out a long sigh. Check the chat. I see a lot of woo woo woos, so it's pretty much the same thing. Fine, I'll stop by for a cupcake, okay? Oh wow, free stuff already. Yeah, let's go. Make sure to use your Twitch Prime subs. And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. I dejectedly follow Sayori across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit, being generally used for third year classes and activities. Sayori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Everyone, the new member is here. I told you, don't call me a new member. Eh? I class around the room. Welcome to the Literature Club. It's a pleasure meeting you. Oof. Thank you for the... The hot dog, Weetabix. Thank you. That's not jarring at all. Oof. Gold one. Sayori always says nice things about you. Seriously? You bought a boy? Is that a different- that is a different character. It's just a slightly different fish shirt on. Way to kill the atmosphere. Ah, Woolen. What a nice surprise. Okay. Welcome to the club. God, that's tall- these are some tall people. Holy shit. Like, am I down here in the height? Is the centre of the screen meant to be my height? And they just tower over me? Like the ones on the left and the right are just six foot four or something. 
All words escape me in this situation. Yeah, yeah, they do. Oh, shit, that's loud. Hi, Wool and Tilda. It's nice to see you visiting our club. I hope you'll enjoy hanging out with us. Um, carrot W Carrot XXX Sayori Tilda. I didn't realize there was a Twitch integration with this game. Thank you very much, Sayori. Jesus Christ. Thank you for the strange thing and trap message. Thank you. Oof. This club dot 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 is full of incredibly cute girls. Yes, I noticed. What are you looking at? If you want to say something, say it. You're all monstrously tall. I mean, s s, -s sorry Natsuki, dot dot dot. Humph. Oh god, she's a humpher. This is the Sundere character. The girl with the sour attitude, his name's apparently Natsuki, is one I don't recognise. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. No, I bet she's actually like 86 years old, or she's like 6,000 year old vampire or something, so it's totally alright. Weirdos. She's also the one who made cupcakes, according to Sayori. Never mind, it's all perfectly fine. You can just ignore her when she gets moody, Tilda. Sayori is the one... Wait, Sayori says that quietly into my ear. Oh. <laughs> then turns back towards the other girls. Anyway, this is Natsuki, always full of energy. Alright. And this is Yuri, the smartest in the club. Don't say things like that. Oh, I see, I see, she's shy. Yuri, who appears to be comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Natsuki. Alright. Ah, I see. It's nice to meet both of you. And it sounds like you already know Monica, is that right? I'm getting so confused. I think I'm, it's going to take me a little while to get used to which one's which. Forgive me, they, they decided to that red and blue were the only two hair colours you could get. 86 years old, hmm. Alright. That's right. It's great to see you again, Woolen. Again? Oh god, she's doing the little bloody hand behind back thing. She's about to headbutt me horribly. We do know each other. Well, we've rarely talked, but we were in the same class last year. Okay, okay, okay. Monica was probably the most popular girl in Smart. Pa uh, smart, beautiful, and athletic. All right, all right. Basically, completely out of my league. I see, I see. This is like the this is like the high tier character that you could never reach. So having a smile at me so genuinely feels a little. Y you too, Monica. All right, it's Monica from Friends. I can see that's my head cannon. Come sit down, Woolen. We made a room for you at the table, so you can sit next to me or Monica. I'll get the cupcakes. Do I get a choice? Hey, I made them. I'll get them. All right, all right, all right. Sorry, I get a little bit excited. Oh, that's- that's- that's fucking wonderful. Then how about I make some tea as well? Oh my god, this is gonna be a wonderful time, isn't it? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. As Sari mentioned, it's been widened, so there's only one space next to Monica and next to Sayori. Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the centre of the room, where Natsuki grabs a wrapped tray and Yuri opens the closet. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. As you would. Natsuki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. So far I like the character we started off with, she seems nice. But I'll see how things develop over the game. Okay, are you ready? Tada! Oh god, she's grinning. Oh! Natsuki lifts the foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white fluffy pup- cupcakes? Decorated to look like little cats. What have you- what have you done now? Thank you for the- another strange transfer tool. You strange boy. The whiskers are drawn with icing, and each little pieces of chocolate are used to make ears. Oh, it's adorable. That's very cute. Yeah. I had no idea we were good at baking. Alright, so this is like, not- this is- this is like the evil, like, the dark woolen. Instead of going down the cooking path, she went down the baking path. Which I'm kinda crap at. Beyond, like, bread. Eh hey, well, you know. Oh god, she's got a cute little fang, though, so I don't know what I'm gonna do. Just hurry and take one. Alright. Sayori grabs one first, then Monica. I follow. It's delicious. Sayori walk, talks with her mouth full and has already managed to get icing on her face. I hope there's no lewd pictures of that. I turn the cupcake around in my fingers, looking for the best angle to take a bite. Natsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. Is she waiting for me to take a bite? Oof. I finally bite down and make a chomp noise. Don't know if that even gets picked up on camera. The icing is sweet and full of flavour. I wonder if she made it herself. Oh dear. This is really good. This is very good, apparently. Thank you, Natsuki. What? Why are you thanking me? It's not like I... Okay, we got we got two Sundaris? Haven't I heard this somewhere before? Yeah. Made them for you or anything. Oh, she sinks slightly. Oh, wonderful game. Alright. Eh, I thought you technically did. Sayori said. Well, maybe. Probably just like a ch as well, doesn't she? Well, not for you, you know, backer. 
That's what she says. I'm gonna translate that, all right? I'll translate that for you. Keep your head in the game. All right, all right. I gave up on Natsuki's weird logic and dismissed the conversation. Yuri returns to the table, carrying a tea set. All right, it's chaos. I see. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot next to the tea cake tray. You keep a whole tea set in this classroom. Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? I mean, I do have some tea here. I'm surprised you knew that. That's a bit strange. I guess. Ihi, don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. I see, I see, I see. Eh? That's not. I see. All the, by the way, all the characters sound exactly like me. I'm sure that'll get some of you going. What is this game? Insulted, Yuri looks away. Oh, I see. I meant that, you know. Oh, she's insulted. I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but I at least enjoy tea. Alright. I'm glad. Alright, she's glad. Yuri smiles... Yuri faintly smiles to herself, in relief. Monica raises an eyebrow, then smiles at me. God, that's a sassy pose. Alright. So what made you consider the literature club? Um, I was afraid of this question. Something tells me I shouldn't tell Monica that I was practically dragged here by Sayori. Well, I haven't joined any clubs yet, and Sayori seemed really happy here, so... That's alright. Don't be embarrassed. We'll make sure you feel right at home, alright? Monica is the best girl less than three. Oh, thank you for the scarf. XD. Alright then. Monica, I'm surprised. How come you decided to start your own club? You could probably be a board member of any of the major clubs. Weren't you a leader of the debate club last year? Aha, uh -huh, well, you know. To be honest, I can't stand all the politics around major clubs, yeah? It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget, and publicly, and how to prepare for events, yeah? I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy, and make something special out of it. What? There's no books in this bloody room. You've been lying this whole time. This is just a tea club. They're gonna sit for, like, 24 episodes drinking tea and eating cake. And if it encourages others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. Monica really is a great leader. Yuri also nods in agreement. Then I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. Oh, bollocks. Everything's based off of literature anyway. It's all good. It's all good shit. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. Well, you've all done a pretty good job so far. But it makes school events like the festival that much more important. I see. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, everyone? Yeah. We'll do our best. You know it. Oh gosh, she's got the little fang as well. Fucking wonderful. Everyone enthusiastically agrees. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. They're not very different, like... They all look fairly similar. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these three. Alright. Maybe that's why they're all delighted by the idea of a new member joining. Although I still don't really know if I can keep up with their level of enthusiasm about literature. So, Wollen, what kind of things do you like to read? Well, um... Considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga. Fucking weave. <laughs> I mention quietly to myself, half-joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. It's another weeb. Holy shit. It's dark woolen indeed. No, not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. Oh yeah, well, how's the doggo? Just sitting in the corner having a great time. We'll leave him there. The doggo will be Protec. Alright. What am I saying? I spoke without even thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with a finger. We can do that, look. Got this nice little teacup here. Fuck. If I spill this, I'm gonna be very upset. Look. Ooh, that's right. That's probably what she's doing. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. She is gonna love Dark Souls. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She probably loves Harry Potter, doesn't she? She seems like the kind of person. She seems so reserved and timid until the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes lit up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. I was wondering why the shy one was in a club in the first place. Clearly, she really likes her books. But you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Alright, alright, alright. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Alright. Alright. 
Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Ah, I read a horror book once. I desperately grasp something I can relate to at the minimal level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. It sounds so true. Holy shit. Really? I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. For someone as gentle as you. I guess you could say that. But if a story makes me think or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. She's a good character. I'm enjoying this. Surreal horror is often the most successful at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. Flip Flappers was a good one. I'd recommend it. Oh, I hate horror. I can agree, fangirl. Oh, why is that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes dart over me for a split second. Never mind. That's right. You usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? What? Yeah, that's what she said. She's not very happy with that. What gives you that idea? She's baring her teeth like a wolf. Probably is a wolf. Have you seen the teeth? You left a piece of scrap paper behind last club meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called Don't Say It Out Loud and Give That Back. You don't have enough scarabs. Fine. Fine. Ee hee. Your cupcakes. Your poems. Everything you do is just as cute as you are. Sairi sidles up behind Natsuki and puts her hand on her shoulders. I'm not cute. Natsuki, you write your own poems. Eh? Well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? Thank you for the... the ambassador. Strange man. I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? N no Natsuki avert her eyes. You wouldn't... like them... Ah, not very a confident writer, are you? Yet. I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing this level of writing takes more than just confidence. Am I blocking her face? Well, you know what? Now we go down here. We'll cover the bit of the game that you were probably all staring at anyway. These strange men. All right. If there's a better place to put the webcam, let me know. I can just put it there. It doesn't really matter. The truest form of writing is being true to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. That's why I hid the boobies. Do you have any writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. Eh? I guess it's the same for Yuri. Oh, I wanted to read everyone's poems. We all sit in silence for a moment. Alright. I have an idea, everyone, Tilda. Dot 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 question mark. Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. Then, next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Uh... Uh... Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, alright then. Plus, now that we have a new member, I think it will help us get a little bit more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond at the club. Isn't that right, Woolen? Yeah. Yeah. Monica s uh, smiles warmly at me once again. Oof. Hold on. There's one problem. Eh? What's that? Now that we're back to the original topic of me joining the club, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my in mind the entire time. You think in the left corner? I can do that. How about... How about... Oof. There we go. Is that better? Now that we're back to the original topic, blah blah blah. I never said I would join this club. Sairi might have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision. I still have other clubs to look at, and, um... I lose my train of thought. All four girls stare at me with dejected eyes. But... I'm sorry, I... I thought... Humph! That's me, that's me, it's me humphing. Orlan, you all... I'm defenceless against these girls. Holy shit. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? That is, if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful anime girls. Right. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girl's eyes light up. Yay, I'm very happy. Sairi wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. That's me hugging you, Twitch chat, if you want to RP. Because remember, I'm Sayori. Huh, hey, that's what you were all saying. You really did scare me for a moment. If you really just came for the cupcakes, I'd be super pissed. She said a naughty word on my Christian livestream. Then that makes it official. Holy shit, she's got long hair. Welcome to the literature club. Oh, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. 
I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment? Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. I expect a haiku from everyone in Twitch chat. Alright? Alright? Monica looks over to me once more. Woolen, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. Ehe. Yeah. Can I really impress the class star, Monica, with my mediocre writing skills? Into the corner we go. There we go. I already feel the anxiety welling up inside of me. Oh god, it's real life. Hello. Willen's a bit cuter than you remember. Thank you. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri and Natsuki clean up their food and turn invisible temporarily. Oof. Whoosh. That's the noise you make when you decloak. Hey, Willen, since we're already here, do you want to walk home together? That's right, Sora and I never walk home together anymore, because she always stays after school for clubs. Sure, might as well. <laughs> I guess, yeah. Yay. Yeah, there you go. Whoosh. And with that, the two of us depart the club room and make our way home. The whole way, my mind wander backs and f back wanders back and forth, my mind, between the four girls. Sayori. Oh, it's reminding us who's who, so we can take a screenshot and put it on MS Paint so we don't forget. Natsuki. Yuri. And of course, Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in a literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. Thank you... Monica, thank you. Perhaps I do have a chance, indeed. We'll have to see. Alright. I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances and make sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. Whoosh. Look. Ooh, he's gone to bed as well. Oh, shit. It's time to write a poem. Oh, we get to write a poem. Pick words you think about your favourite club member will like. Something good will happen with whoever likes your poem the most. Alright. Um, I like the one that is my childhood friend, so I'm assuming she likes naughty- like, she's like into horror lately, so she probably likes weird things. We're meant to think she likes sparkly happy things, but I bet she's like, really like, like, doesn't or something. Maybe she does, I don't know. But the character we like- okay, let's have a little thing. How about... Vivacious, holy shit, effligent. These are some big words. How about, um, I want, like, happy words. Dream. Kawaii. Skirt. Vertigo. Bunny. Anxiety. She's, she's a little anxious, but, like, I don't think she'd like that word, right? Um, how about nibble? Oh, my. Pout. Oh, she did do a pout. Uh, suicide. Alright. Um, mouse. Some, one of these words is not like the other. I'll tell you that. Um, unrequited. Yeah, because she... She clearly, like, likes us, but we apparently don't like her for some reason. But we're not gonna write that, that'll be rude. Instead we'll write, um... Twirl. Yeah. Precious. Horror. Whisper. Sadness. Passion. Yeah. Judgment. Massacre. Fantasy. Jumpy. Lust. Papa. Oh. I don't like those two words put together. Alright, how about, um... Uh, excite- ex no excitement, like... Blanket, yeah. Poof. Oh, I'm using poof instantly. Calm? A valentine? I love calm. I'm a calm guy. Spinning? Climax? These are some naughty words. Childhood. That's the word right there. Awesome? Forgive? Definitely forgive. Cute? Smile? Oh god, they put all the good ones in the same one. Let's go for cute. Oh, it says the one who likes it when we write it on the- No, maybe not. Maybe they just randomly jump. Um, peaceful. Heart. Amazing. Uh, daydream. Wonderful. Entropy. Uh, she likes anime, doesn't she? We're not going for that one. How about... Um, alone? A little one, just sneak that in there, maybe. Cheer. Doki Doki. Cheer. Um... Happiness, that's the one we wanted. Puppy, obviously, it's required. Cheeks, there we go. Alright, how did that go? The classic poet. Hi again, Willen. Hello. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. Haha. -ha. Nah, don't worry. As I throw my tea bag in the bin. Give me just a second. I have a nice cranberry and raspberry tea today. Oh, this wonderful- oh shit, I missed. No, I hit it, alright. Yeah, I have a nice tea today because I heard this game so wonderful. 
This might be a little strange for me, but I'll at least keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging- Did I actually put that in? Oh, okay. I thought I, like, just missed. I was worried it was gonna, like, stain the carpet or something. Oof. Thanks for keeping your promise, Woolen. That's alright. Is it possible to literally write nothing? Like, if you wait there for, like, ten minutes, you just write nothing. I hope this isn't too overwhelming or a commitment for you. Oh, thank you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Oh, come on. Like he deserves any slack. Sayuri told me you didn't even want to join any clubs this year. I'm talking behind my back. And last year too. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what. Oof, there we go. But if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth as someone who keeps a manga collection in a club room. Yeah, you know what? How about we go here? We cover the boobies. Hello, this is slightly better. Look, it's a picture of me. Wonderful. There we go. Yeah, I'm just not- I'm, I'm only reading, like, the top half of chat, so I know it's been filtered through mods. I don't think I'm thinking I've seen anything yet. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and Manga. Manga is literature. Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plucks back into her seat. Don't worry, guys. Woolen always gives his best as long as he's having fun. That is not true. He helps us with busy work without me even asking. That is probably true. Like cooking or cleaning your room. That is just straight true. All right. How dependable. Yes, I'm the great guy. I promise. I don't always start my streams like an hour late. That's because your room is messy and disturbing. You almost set your house on fire once. Is that so? Hee <laughs> hee. Yeah. This is me. That is me on the left. You two really are good friends, aren't you? We are the same person, Yuri. I might be a little jealous. Well, yeah. How come? You and Woolen can become good friends too. I don't know, she has to do a few more airs, I think. Uh, um, Sayori. Hmm? Dot dot dot. As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she's put me into. Oh, oh, oh. Yuri, even bought something for you today, you know, told her. Wait, w wait, Sayori. Dot dot dot. Eh? Me? Um, not really. Don't be shy, Tilda. It's really nothing. Well, what is it? Never mind. Oh, wow. We've known her for like a day. She's already going like, woof, 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 on the face. Sorry, made it sound like it was a big deal when it's really not. Is everything alright? You got like a fever or something? Um, what do I do? Eh? That's the noise they make. I'm sorry, Yuri. I wasn't thinking. I guess that means it's up for me to rescue the situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. God, that's a little rude. If it'll make me happy no matter what, you could, you could have missed out the first statement there. Is that so? Yeah, I won't make it a big deal if you don't want it to be. Alright, well, here. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book you thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it. If you want it. Is this how you start down her path? This is... How is this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. What a kind-hearted person. I enthusiastically take the book. Oh god, step up. Phew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expect Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Is this day two? I'm assuming this is day two, right? Sorry, and Monica are having a cheery conversation at the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression, like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. Oof. Man. It looks like no one wants to be bothered today. I slumped down to the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature related? <laughs> Alright. I guess I could always read some of the book Yuri gave me, yeah. But I'm feeling a little too tired to read. I could probably fall asleep right now. I close my eyes and end up listening in on one of Sayori's conversations with Monica. We're probably gonna seem really lame compared to all the other clubs, though. Yeah, that's our secret voice. No one knows about our secret voice. Hmm. Well, we can't give up. That's our secret voice. You see, look, plot development. The festival is our chance to show everyone what literature is all about. <laughs> I forgot her voice already. 
The problem is that the idea of a literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. But it's not like that, you know. We just need a way of showing that to everyone. Something that speaks to their creative minds? Mmm. That doesn't solve the problem, though. Eh? What do you mean? Even if we come up with the most fun thing ever, no one will come in the first place if it's a literature event. So it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place, you know? And after they come, we can do the thing to speak to their creative minds. Great. Ooh woo woo. What's this? Sire is taking this very seriously. It's rare to hear her deliberating like this. Huh? That's a good point. Is that the case? Do you think food will do the trick? Yes, feed us. What, what kind? Ah, I guess we could... Cupcakes, yeah! Alright, good thinking. Yeah, Natsuki would love to do that. Ah, oh, you're right. Natsuki makes the best cupcakes. That works out perfectly. That that wasn't why you suggested it? Cupcakes speak to my creative tummy. I really like this character. Cupcakes it is, then. <laughs> she started to give up. I'm hungry. Anyway, we still need to work out the details of the event itself, like we're slipping back into her secret words. Whoosh. Oof, you like that little camera pan. I found myself smiling. In the end, Sayori is still a usual self. Thank you. But therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me, who has trouble of finding any motivation at all. It is me. Okay. Sayori can put her mind to things and make them come to life. I guess that's why I ended up letting her get on my case about things. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. Ah! Oh! Ooh ah! I open my eyes to see Sayori's face filling my vision. I nearly fall out of my chair. Oh, wow, that was exciting. Interactive Twitch stream. Oh. There you go. I nearly fall out of my chair. Nearly, shit. Eehee, sorry. Wait. Actually, I'm not sorry at all. My bum kind of hurts now, actually. I think I landed on, like... I have, like, an Ikea desk. It's got, like, a metal foot. I think I landed on it. Kind of hurts. It's your fault for sleeping like that. This wasn't the napping club. <laughs> Does our school have a napping club? Yeah. You're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in a club, you're going to have less time for anime, you know. What about Northern Lion plays The Binding of Isaac Rebirth, episode 482? You'll need to get used to it. I need my daily three hours of Northern Lion, though. Don't say that so loud. I glance over my shoulder to see if Monica overheard. God, I was hoping there wouldn't be some weird in real life integration while they sent Monica to your house to peek through. It's true though. Yeah. I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, Sayori. Eehee. It's what I do best. That's the problem. What about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Eh? It is me. How did they write a character to be me? That's wonderful. No, not every day. That's it's kind of kind of true. That's not very convincing. How many days this week have you gotten up on time? That's oh, it's a secret. Oof. I knew it. Come on. Oh my god. This is probably the best character. At least give me the benefits of the doubt. I can't even do that. Look, Sayori, it's written all over you. Eh? Sayori glances at herself. How is it written all over me? Ah, oh, you were clearly in a rush this morning. Look, your hair is sticking all out all around here. Ah, I run my fingertips down the side of Sayori's hair, trying to straighten it out. I didn't realise I was going to be doing, like, a naughty voiceover. Man, you really need a brush for this. My hair is really hard to get just right. I won't fall for that. There's more than just your hair. Look, your bow isn't straight either. And there's a toothpaste stain on your collar right here. Holy shit. I try to wipe off the stain with my finger. That, that's not toothpaste. Of course they would. No one's going to tell you about it. Because they don't want to embarrass you. Fortunately, I don't really care about that. Hey, you meanie. <laughs> I'm sorry if you're wearing a headset. <laughs> and you don't even have your blazer buttoned up. <laughs> Seriously, sorry. I'm sorry, chat. Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? Eh? That's super mean. Like, super duper mean. Sorry, but you'll thank me later. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I won't do that again. I start to... Oh, 
I start to button her blazer up from the bottom. <laughs> Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. Oh, ee hee. Wait. This is so funny. What is? Well, I was just thinking about how weird it is to have a friend who does these kinds of things. Eh? Don't say that. You'll make me feel weird about it, stupid. It's okay though. I'm happy we're like this. You and me, Twitch chat. Aren't you? Ah. I, I guess. Hey, be careful. The button might come off. Wait, there's not gonna be boobs on it. Why is this one so hard to close? I struggle to fully close the button near her chest. Does- is this- you sure this is not naughty? Does this thing even fit you properly? Ee <laughs> hee. It did when I bought it. Sorry. Oh god, I hope this doesn't mean they're like 14. If you ever buttoned it, you would have noticed it sooner if it doesn't make you, uh, fit you anymore. What are you smiling about? It just means my boobs got bigger again. She is 14. Oh dear. D don't say that out loud! Look. Oof. Ee hee. Anyway, you look much better now, so... Ah. Why does it feel strange to see Sayori's blazer buttoned up like that? But this is so stuffy. Ooh. It's not worth it at all. Sairi hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. There we go. They should call this Doki Doki Doggo Club, to be honest. There we go. I've improved the game 10 times over for everyone. She's 18, Willen. Oh, thank God. All right. I thought it was about to be like some strange pedo. 14 is legal in the Vatican, so it's okay. Okay. I'm going to assume she's 18 for the sake of this recording. That's so much better. Sari puts her arms out and twirls around. So, if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? Oh, woo. Then why do you keep saying things like that's a good thing? Because, if I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't let you do things like this. Roo, 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 roo. Woof, woof. And you take care of me better than anyone else would, anyway. Woof, woof. That's why I keep keeping it unborked. Bjork. Stop saying all these embarrassing things. Eh? Bjork. I didn't say anything embarrassing. Jeez. Well, anyway, just focus on trying to wake up a little bit earlier. Only if you focus on going to bed earlier. Alright, yeah. Fine, fine. It's a deal. Ee hee. I guess we really are better at taking care of each other than we are at taking care of ourselves. We need this lady. We need this lady in our lives. Yeah, I guess so, huh? So maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. You're doing it again, Sayori. Oh, but I was joking that time. Man, it's impossible to tell with you sometimes. Oh, God. You were here this whole time, holy shit. Okay, everyone. Eh? Monica suddenly calls out. You didn't notice me, like, touching your friend. Okay. Why don't we share the poems we wrote now? only on Monica now. Yay. Wollen, I can't wait to read yours. Yeah, same. I fail to sound enthusiastic, but Sairi still trots away to receive her poem. Doggo can go down to the corner now. He's done a good. He's, he's our classmate, Doggo. He's doing a learn. There we go. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? The one on the left is at least 16. Okay. Yeah. My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I couldn't really find much inspiration, since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't wait. Sari and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. Alright. Sari's is on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. Hmm. 
On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook, like the compound bow in Dark Souls. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. That's, that's the thing we do. Who do I show my phone to first? I mean, Sayori, obviously. I'm definitely most comfortable sharing with Sayori first. She's my good friend, after all. She's clearly the best character. I'm sorry, everyone. Sayori's clearly the best character. Dot, dot, dot. Ooh. Oh my goodness! This is so good, Wallen. I'm glad you like it, Sayori. I tried my best. I love it. Ah, oh, wonderful. I had no idea you were such a good writer. I did put 20 words together on a piece of paper. Sayori, you must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. Well, stop right now, actually. You should stop that. Maybe that's why. I have no idea what I like either. Ahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahah
I didn't put anime in it, so I don't really want to show it to her. Monica's... She's... Um, she probably won't like it that much. Although, she's shy. Alright. You know what, we'll show it to Natsuki. Dot dot dot. Hmm? Well, it's about what I expected from someone like you. That's a little blunt. Well, excuse me. It's not like I said it was bad. It just didn't evoke any emotions. So basically, it's not cute enough for your tastes. Do you want to get smacked? I'll pass. Sigh. Well, anyway, guess I need to show you mine. Not that you'll like it or anything. <coughs> Eagles can fly. Monkeys can climb. Crickets can leap. Horses can race. Owls can seek. Cheetahs can run. Eagles can fly. People can try. But that's about it. Okay. Yeah. I told you that you weren't going to like it. I like it. What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. You are 15. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? That is also true. Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. I'm quite well spoken for somebody who doesn't know anything about literature. Yes, exactly. I like it when it's easy to read, but hits you hard. Yeah. Like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. I can agree. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set up for a rhyme at the end and then made it fall flat on purpose. That was smart. That was very smart. It helps bring out the feeling in the last line. So you did. I guess more went into it than I realised. That's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? She must have used the power of her tiny fang. Yeah, I guess not. I decide to humour her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. Oh. Whoosh. Pretty interesting music. I like the music. Let's show it to Yuri, because she's the next in the list. Dot dot dot. Ooh. Mmm. Mmm. Yuri stares at the poem. A minute passes. More than enough time for her to finish reading. Um. Oh. So sorry. I forgot to start speaking. Uh, um. It's fine, don't force yourself. I'm not. I just need to put my thoughts into words. Hold on. Okay. This is your first time writing a poem, right? Uh, yeah. Why do you ask? I'm just making sure. I guess that it might be after reading through it. Ah, oh, so it's that bad. No! Did I raise my voice? Oh, I'm so sorry! Yuri bres buries her face in her hands. Okay, sure. I couldn't help but notice that it's been several minutes and we haven't really gotten anywhere. It might take Yuri a while to get used to new people. It's fine, I didn't really notice. What were you saying? Right, um... It's just that there were specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And I'm being very thing myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think that the most notable thing that I realise in the new writers is that they try to make their styles very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick up a writing style separate from the topic matter so that they form fit the two together. The end result is that both the style and the expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanour totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone and she sounds like an expert. Of course, it's not something that you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably one of the most challenging parts. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a little biased, though. Biased? How? Um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri is apologising to herself or me or Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily as if it's a rare opportunity for her, which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? That is true. Oh Christ, she's like a doctor. <coughs> Ghosts under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing. It must be this one. The last remaining streetlight to have withstood the test of time. 
the last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe, calm, breathing air of the present, but leaving in the past. The light flickers. I flicker back, and also hit my head on my microphone stand. That hurt. Ow. Dot dot dot. I'm sorry to have such terrible handwriting. What? I wasn't thinking about that at all. It took you a long time to read. Ah. Well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is very pretty. Eh? It is quite ladylike handwriting, I guess. That's a relief. Also, I liked the poem. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty, pretty atmospheric. It's short, but very descriptive. It wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. Oh, Yuri. It's not the size that matters, it's how you use it. I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest. Since it's our first time sharing, I want to write something a little bit more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? Ooh, -hoo -hoo. actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, and... Really? I must have totally missed the point. Yeah, I'm gonna- I'll highlight this. I'll probably put it on YouTube as well. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it after all. But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. Oh, she's lonely. She's very lonely. She feels distanced. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost. It's because she's shy and she can't talk to people. I get it. Or she likes haunting people and going, ooh. Lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past, and soon to be left with nothing. Oh, she done something weird? Was there, was, there, was there used to be a fifth member of the Doki Doki Literature Club? And then they like pushed them out a window or something because they weren't a doggo. Was it the doggo? Maybe it was the doggo. That's a lot more solemn putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. It's nothing really. Well, it makes me happy that you think that. Just remember that it won't be long before you pick up on these things too. Yeah, maybe you're right. I guess I'll have to keep trying. I'm counting on you. Whoosh. Yeah, show it to Monica. The maker said they're all 18 in the story, we know that some of them are a bit younger. Maybe they were held back or something, let's just assume then. Hello, Willen. Hello. Having a good time so far? Yeah. Well, yeah. Good. Glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course I'll be afraid to bring things up. Yes, they're all like six foot four. They could probably like slog me out the window, couldn't they? I'm much better off just going with the flow until I've settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. Ah ha 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 Don't be worry, Woolen. We are all a little embarrassed today. Do not fret. It is the kind of thing that we will have to get past soon. Ha ha ha. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like this one. It makes me think of something Sayori would like. Yes, we wrote it for Sayori. Is that so? You and Sayori are really good friends, right? I wouldn't be surprised if you had those sorts of things in common. Ah, well, we may be good friends, but Sayori and I are actually really different. Hmm. Well, that may be the case. But there are also some similarities that you wouldn't expect. The way she talks about you. It sounds like the two of you are very close and really care about each other's well-being. If you show it in different ways, it ends up being more similar than you'd think. I'm going down Sayori's path, because she's the best girl. And also, I think that's the kind of vibe I get when reading your poem. Hmm. Are you sure you're not reading into it too much? Aha! I could be. Oh gosh, I sound like Yuri. But in any case, Sayori's writing has a kind of gentle feeling to it. I can tell that she likes exploring with emotions like happiness and sadness. Who knew that someone could be so happy, and also enjoy sad things too? Yeah, that's totally unexpected. Well, each to their own. And you shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little bit either. I'm sure I'll end up writing and trying different things a lot. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's alright. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little biased towards their own kind of styles, but I'll always find I'll always help you find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. I have noticed that they all have very distinct handwriting styles. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything, but back up. 
Anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, <laughs> I'm not very good. Oh, ha, ha. oh, you sound pretty confident for someone that claims to be not very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? Yes, that's, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Well, let's read it then. <clears throat> oh God, it's a naughty poem. Give me a sec, I need to read. I need to have a little sip beforehand. Hmm. Hole in wall. It couldn't have been me. See? The direction the sparkle protrudes? A noisy neighbour. An angry boyfriend. I'll never know. I wasn't home. Oh. Appear inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I reel, blind, like a film let out in the sun. But it's too late. My retinas. Already scorched with a permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. Ooh. Ooh, yes. She's 15. Um, it wasn't too bright. It was too deep. Stretching forever into anything. A hole of infinite choices. I realise now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out, and he on the other side was looking in. Okay, I'm... I think you could probably read quite a lot into this. I'm not going to. I'm not going to let the game... I'm let the game read into it for me. I'm sure we'll find out what it means later. So, what do you think? Hmm, it's very freeform, is that what you call it? Sorry, I'm not really into the right person to ask for a feedback. Is she... Did she go into like? Did she like peek through at one of those naughty, one of those naughty places? Did she, have a little, did she like put her eye through something like stabbed it on the other end. Sorry, I'm not really the kind of person to ask. Ah ha 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 ha! It's all right, I guess. Yeah, that kind of style's gotten pretty popular nowadays, though. Mm, yes, that is. A lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When out, when performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Ah. Oh. Well, I'm not sure how to put it. I guess you could say I had some kind of epiphany recently. I've been influencing my poems a lot. She- I know what she did. She put a hole in the girl's bathroom. She's been peeping through every time. That's what it is. An epiphany. Yeah, something like that. She's a very lewd girl. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. It is, yeah. Maybe after everyone's better friends with each other. That was a very strong to start poem. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. All right. Wait to get like a pen and paper. Give me a sec. Right, got a post it note. Oh. Let's have a little write. Oof. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a point. Brain. Fucking hell. Brain on point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, you'll never make any pro progress. Perfect progress. Just force yourself to get something down on the paper and tidy it up later. Force yourself tidy up later. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll get a dark puddle of ink. That is true, I used to do that in school. Did you ever get that in like maths? You used to like get your pen on the bloody margin. Just move your hand and go with the flow. Flow equals good. That's my advice for today. Alright, so I don't know if you can see that, but I have successfully taken notes from Monica. I wrote brain on point, perfect progress, force yourself, tidy up later, flow is good. Because she's lewd. Thanks for listening. Alright. Phew. I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone's judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. That is true. This is a literature club after all. I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Cyrie and Monica happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. And as they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrow furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? She doesn't quite understand her posh language, and the other one is looking down on her, isn't it? Eh? Um, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Ah, oh, thanks. Yours is... 
Cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? I know that. I, I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh? You mean you have to try that hard to come, something up, <laughs> come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it didn't really come out nice at all. I see. Her shyness is getting the better of her. She just tries to be nice, and all she knows is the surface level, Natsuki, which is that she is cute, but deep down, she hates cute things, I bet. Unlike the doggo. We love the doggo. We'll have a couple of suggestions. Humph. If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way? Sayori liked it. And Woolen did too. Oof. A big shard of glass in my eye. So based on that, I'll happily give you suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me. I appreciate the offer, but I spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change any time soon, unless of course I come across something particularly inspiring. Which I haven't yet. <clears throat> and Woolen liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. That's like he suddenly stands up. Oh, ho, 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 ho. I didn't realise you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Eh? That's not what I... Ooh, you just... Uh... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Willard appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. What's with this, like, tie the Tasmanian Tiger music? It's fucking nuts. Real headbanger. Ah, oh. and how did you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? I... No. If I was full of myself, I wouldn't deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Ooh. Ooh. Um... Is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't the only one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Woolen started showing up. That is true. That is definitely true. I do have that effect on people. N Natsuki? Um, Natsuki. <laughs> yeah, that's a little... This doesn't involve you. I don't like fighting, guys. <laughs> Suddenly, both girls turned towards me as if they just noticed I was standing there. Woolen! Sh she's trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. If she could get over herself and appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point in making your poems all convoluted for no reason? The meaning should just jump out at the reader, not force them to have to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, Woolen. Well, wait. There's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning the most effectively. Avoiding them is not un only unnecessary limit unnecessarily limiting to yourself. It's also a waste. This is actually really well written. Like, this whole thing is like, it's clearly got like a message behind it, isn't it? You understand that, right, Woolen? Um, well? How did I get dragged into this in the first place? I agree. Might hurt me. It's not like I know anything about writing. But whoever I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. Help me, Sayori! Natsuki... Natsuki glares at me, drawing up any words out of my mouth. So instead I turn to Yuri. Yuri... But Yuri's expression is so defenseless I can't bring myself to say anything to her. Sayori! Oh, Eh? Yeah! Everyone's fighting is making Sayori uncomfortable. How can the two of you keep fighting when you're making your friend feel like this? Woolen! Oh. That's her problem. This isn't about her. I agree. It's unfair for others to interject their own feelings into our conflict. Yeah, so unless Sayori was to tell Yuri what a jerk she's being, she would never... It's your immaturity that made her feel upset in the first place. Excuse me? Should I not have brought her in? Excuse me? Are you listening to yourself? This is exactly why no one likes... Stop! Oh, wait. <clears throat> Stop it, Ron. Stop. <sighs> Natsuki. Yuri. You guys are my friends. I just want everyone to get along and be happy. My friends are wonderful people, and I love them because of their differences. Natsuki's poems, they're amazing because they give you so many feelings with just a few words. 
And Yuri's poems are amazing because they paint beautiful pictures in your head. Everyone's so talented. So why are we fighting? Because, well, also, Natsuki's cute and there's nothing wrong with that. And Yuri's boobs are the same as they always were. Big and beautiful. All right then. Sayori. Sayori stands triumphantly. Monica, oh, maybe she's happy about that. Maybe she liked being brought in because I mean, she could defend her friends against each other, maybe. Monica stands behind her with a bewildered in uh, expression. I'll make some tea. Yuri, oh shot, that was a fucking zoomy boy. Holy shit. Natsuki sits down with a blank expression on her face, remembering that she equipped the cloak and dagger. So, this is why Sayori is price president. I whisper to Monica. She nods in return. To be more honest. I might come off as a good leader, and I can organise things, but I'm not very good with people. I couldn't even bring myself to interject. As president, that's kind of embarrassing for me. Ah ha 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 ha! Nah. It's not like I can blame you. I wasn't able to say anything either, that is true. Well, I guess that just means Siren is amazing in her own ways, isn't she? You could say that. She might be in her head, but sometimes it's weirdly suspicious that she knows exactly what she's doing. I see. Take good care of her, okay? Oof. There's like a little tilt over there. I would hate to see herself get hurt. That makes two of us. You can count on me. Monica smiles sweetly at me, causing my stomach to nod. <laughs> Such a genuine person really does make a good president, regardless of what she says. If only I could get the chance to talk to her a little bit more. Whoosh. Okay, everyone. It's just about time for us to leave. How about... How did you all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. Well, I did say it was worth it. It was alright. Well, mostly. Mark, 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 woof, 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 Etc. Woolen, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a night, it was a neat thing to talk with everyone. Awesome. In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. And maybe you learn something from your friends too. So your poems will turn out to be even better. I think to myself. I did learn a little more about the kinds of poems everyone likes. With any luck, that means I can do at least a better job impressing those I want to impress. I nod to myself with newfound determination. Woolen! Ready to walk home? I've aged 60 years in the last 45 minutes! Ooh. Sure, let's go! Hee hee! Oh, my bones! Oh, oh. Sairi beams at me. Oh, she's so happy. It truly has been a while since Sairi and I have spent this much time together. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. She is clearly the best girl. Sayori, about what happened earlier? Eh? What do you mean? She's also young again. You know, between Yuri and Natsuki? Does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no. 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 Nah, no. Yeah, they're alright. You don't hate them, do you? No, of course not. Nah, they're fine. Alright, I just want your opinion, yeah. I can see why they'd make good friends with you, though. Oh, oof. You know, Wollen, it's really nice that I get to spend time with you in the club. But I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you, too. That's... Ee oh, so I just spend time with other people as well to make her happy, and not just with her. Alright. Every day is going to be so much fun. <laughs> Sigh. Looks like she hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but does it really need to stop there? We'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. I said that to myself more to me than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. It's because I'm Sayori. Okay. Yeah. Let's do this. Let's go. All right, then. Sweet. Oh, there's chapters. Do I need to save? Okay, let me save. Empty slot. Just in case something happens. Like if the game crashes. Hmm. Alright then, so I need to write another nice poem for everyone. How about we start off with, um... Twirl... Um... Hope... Peaceful... Together... Smile... Starscape, um, pout, calm, childhood, Q, 
cute. Um, a tone. Excitement. Oh no, they do dance. They do. They do da jump when they like the words that you've written. All right. Um, unrequited. Oh, she does like unrequited. All right. Swimsuit. <coughs> Marriage. All right. She likes. She likes like you know, future prospects kind of things. Bubbles. Fireflies. Fun. Lucky. Determination, maybe? Okay, I don't know if we got a full on her on that one, but tried our best. Thank you for the, the earphones. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little bit more comfortable here over the last couple of days. Alright, a couple of days later. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. What's with this with Woolen and Fireflies and swimsuits? Nothing different, nothing new. Hey, Woolen! Yo, Sayori! Oh god, we're down, we're hip with the kids. How's it shaking, friends? Yeah. Look like you're in a good mood today. Eehehe. I'm still not used to being in the club. That's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No, th of course I will. Eh? That's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Eh? Why that all of a sudden? No real reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Ah, ah, ah. Sorry, nervously retrains her coin purse. She's gonna go try and get a nice retainee from the gambling center. Oof. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. And she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill out onto the desk. Only two small cloin uh, coins fall out. Ah ha 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 ha! I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So either you're not hungry and want an excuse to take a walk, or you planned on conveniently forgetting that you spent all your money so I would lend you some. I'd lend her money. That's one more thing. You're always hungry. Ah, oh, always hungry. Jeez. That only leaves the one option. Ooh ah. Ooh ah. I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. Aha ha. Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice she was listening in. Her face is in the book, as always. Ah, ah, ah. It's just something in my book. Yuri, oh. Tell Willard to help me borrow some money, please. That's, um, don't get me involved like that, Samori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling out a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Take that, hmm, yes, hmm, mm hmm. Oh, did I just... Oh, I didn't mean that. Oh, I got absorbed in my book. Oh. Ah, ha, 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 ha. I like it when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. She's communist. Retribution. That. No, she's an idiot. All right, it's me, still. Still, coming from you, Sayori... I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sari knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. Hmm. But, but, you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. Oh god, lewd. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Oh god, you tricked your friends into making a delicious baked treat. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> Pwap! Kya! Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and stumbles onto the desk. Ow. What was... Eh? A cookie! Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. I is this a miracle? Oof. It's because I paid my restitution. <laughs> Retribution. Actually, that one almost works. Ha 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 ha. I was just going to give it to you, and then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. I was totally worth seeing your reaction too. <laughs> no, Natsuki. That's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez. Just eat it. Sayori rapidly opens the wrapper and takes a big bite. 
so good. Oomph. <laughs> Sari cun suddenly clasps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue. Oof. Ouch. Hee hee ho ho. You're going through a lot. Just over one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Oh, yours looks really good too. Though, can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Please. Thank you. Fine. All right. Still, I'm very happy you shared this one with me. Hee 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 hoo hoo. Sari gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Oh, I'm alone, I can't do that. Oh, jeez. I guess it, I guess it. Cookie still in hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sari off of her. Oh! Sari leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. H hey! Did, did you seriously just do that? Fuck. Ooh, 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 ooh. Mouthful, Sari trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in her club room. Ugh. Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me? Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a little unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Oh, bugger off. Hey, that's so true. Excuse me? Suddenly the door swings open. Whoosh. That's the noise you make. I'm not going to get up and open my own door. Sorry, I am super sorry. Just got back from Starbucks. They had the double chocker pumpkin latte. Last one there. I had to guess it. I'm so sorry, everyone. There you are. I didn't mean to be late. It's just things went on. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're super strong-willed. But uh, boyfriend? <laughs> what on earth are you talking about? <laughs> Monica quizzically glances at me. Oh, uh, never mind that. Who are you up with anyway? Oh, Sayori's clearly the best, by the way. Ah! Well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of lost track of time. Oh, this is at the end of the day. Alright. Ah ha 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 ha! That makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Ah, I don't really. I just kind of started recently. Are you sure? I just wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play some for us, Monica. Oh, that's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little better, I will. Yay. That sounds cool. I'll look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Woolen. It's not Valve. It's an anime girl that's not Valve. They're not going to let me down. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that, but if you can fix the spy in the next, like, six months, that'll be nice. <laughs> Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. We recently started to get playtesters. It's getting really great. We're having people check before we make balance changes. I'd love to chair them once we're ready. Right. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? No. No, like, no, no not really, no. I choose to leave out Sairi's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone's already settled down. Sairi already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Whoosh. Woolen. Comma. Woolen. Sairi suddenly comes up to me. Oof. I'm gonna go get some supplies from another classroom. Wanna come with me? Supplies? What for? Well, you know, the festival's coming up. Me and Monica were gonna make some posters and stuff. So I need to go and find some crayons and markers and glue sticks. Are you 18? Ah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'll go with you, sure. Yeah. Alright, Monica, we'll be back soon. Oh, are you going with Woolen to get the supplies? There's no need to trouble yourself. I'll be happy to go with him. 
Oh, but I wanted to go. It's so much fun exploring empty classrooms and stuff. <laughs> okay. It was just a suggestion anyway. Yeah. See if you can find poster paper too, alright? Alright, yeah, let's go, yeah. That's ready, you ready? Yeah, alright, F5, there we go. Yeah, let's go. Woo woo woo. Sairi and I exit the club room. I follow behind Sairi as Sairi hums and skips throughout the hallway. Honestly, it feels as if I'm talking to the kid at the mall or something. I'm hoping I'm not. Oh, this will be more immersive if I wore thigh highs. Alright, maybe for the sequel, Doki Doki Literature Club 2. Sairi finds pleasure in the simplest things sometimes. That means I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to wear thigh highs. I'm not going to buy thigh highs. They're probably expensive, aren't they? Not that I know. Um, what exactly are you in this festival for, anyway? I'm not sure how you'd make an event out of literature. Hehehe. <laughs> Me and Monica have it all planned out. Don't you worry. Is that so? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're going to do a poetry performance. It's going to be... A perf what, though? Well, everyone's going to take turns on stage and recite their favourite poems. Ah, that sounds... Kind of dull. Ooh, woolen. Oh, you're not thinking about it the right way at all. It's not just about reading poems. It's about performing them. Like, if you say the po lines of the poem like, Between my feet, the last remaining flower beckons to me. Chosen dark soul's enemy. Oof, ouch. My backstab. But to one end have I summoned this joy. Glorious teamwork. For the sun, the once preposterous field before me, is but a barren wasteland. Oh, like that, Sayori. How do I put this? I'm sure it's just me, but it's impossible for me to take you seriously when you talk like that. Eh? You meanie? I'm working super hard on this, you know. I am not. I'm not opening an online store to sell woolen sleevelet brand thigh socks. Be gone. All right. I'm working super hard on this, you know. <laughs> I know, I know. Where's your nose? I only just noticed. None of them have noses, do they? That's quite strange. Um, I just meant that this is quite a unordinary contrast to your usual cute self. Aha! Uh -huh. Don't say that. It's embarrassing. But I guess that means I'm doing a good job. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. I'm excited. The festival's going to be so much fun. Sorry, spins herself around the classroom again. Hey, Wallen, this classroom over here is empty. Let's begin the mission. I hope this isn't naughty. It's been a long time since I've spent time with Sayori like this, but in the end she hasn't changed one bit. She's nothing but a ball of sunshine, drawing happy vibes from the world around her. We need more people like this. It's a pretty nostalgic feeling from me. I can get behind that. As the years went by, I began to hold myself in my room more and more. Holy shit. It's still me. So going adventuring with Sayori brings around a special source of feeling I had forgotten in me. Oh god, socialization. Okay, let's move the dog over. He's probably not sitting in his chair anymore, is he? Look. Can I transform? He's just listening in quietly. There we go. Sorry, head straight to the closet, and I follow. Let's see what we have in here. I really hope this isn't going to be naughty. Crayons! Alright, it's fine. Sari pulls out a box full of crayons off the shelf. They're the best brand too. Yeah, Crayola. They're kind of dirty though. Sari starts pulling various crayons out of the box, reading the colour names. Alright, that's one down. Don't get distracted, we still need to find... Wait, I'm looking for my favourite colour. Fine, fine. Then at least move aside so I can look for the poster paper. Ah, I dropped one by accident. This isn't naughty, is it? Smack! Ah! Kya! Sari be bends over and smacks her forehead right into the shelf. Oh no! She falls back onto the floor and the crayons spill all over her lap. Ow! Oh god! That's horrible! You are right. Yeah! My forehead! Sari clutches her forehead. Jeez, Sayori. That's just like you, isn't it? Come on, let me see. Since she's sitting on the floor, I grab her by the waist and pull her out of the closet. You have to move your hands, Sayori. But it hurts. Critical hit. Just do it for a second. I probably only did like 18 damage, didn't it? Oh, I hope you're alright. It makes me really sad, actually. She's been so nice. She doesn't deserve to be bullied by some bloody crayons. She slowly releases her hands from her forehead. I gently brush her bangs to the side. Ow. Sorry. There's a huge red mark in the centre of her forehead. A bump is starting to form as well. Man, that's going to swell up. I hope she's alright. I should find you some ice. Yeah. Woolen. 
Why would I even find ice around this time? I guess a cold drink would do. You don't have to. Ooh, I'm fine looking like a unicorn. Ooh, ha -ha. Oh, I did a little grin. Oh, even wincing from the pain, she makes a silly joke. Oh, what are you saying? I'll be right back. We're going to be right back, all right? Yeah. Whoosh, there we go. I pat her on the shoulder and run out into the hallway. I locate the nearest vending machine. What should I get? It doesn't really matter because it'll be used as an ice pack rather than a drink, but I know she likes apple juice, so I buy that one. It's just a moment, I'm already heading to the classroom where I left Sayori. Oh, you're still there. She has one palm on her forehead and is a forehead. At least one of at least they were already in the wrong spots before I spilled them. Sayori, here. I hand her the bottle of apple juice. Is that apple juice, all right? It's nice and cold. She opens up the cap and starts drinking from it. Sayori, what are you doing? It's for your forehead, you idiot. Ah, uh, uh, uh. sorry, I f sorry, I forgot. Oh. Ah, ha, ha, ha. How did you, hard did you hit your head? Yeah. She places the bottle against the bump on her forehead. It stings. Oh. Just bear with it. I'm sure it'll feel better soon. Looks like you've cleaned up most of the crayons, so that's good. Hey, Walden. This kind of reminds you of growing up, doesn't it? Eh? What do you mean? All the crayon battles of 94. Remember how we used to play outside all the time? I would always try to keep up with you. You were kind of oblivious in some ways. Like I usually fell behind or had trouble climbing on the things you did. Or when you went to go pee on the side of bars, I couldn't do it. But sometimes, when I tried to do things I couldn't, I would get myself hurt. And I'd fall behind and scrape myself and get a bump. I would have to start crying really hard. Ahaha! And then you would rush over as quick as you could. You would try really hard to get me to stop crying. It was almost like you blamed yourself and were getting in trouble if someone found out. Even if it wasn't really your fault at all, you know. I really need a friend like this. Aw. Oh. Don't you remember? Come to think of it, maybe I do remember a bit. I guess I was always focused on my games and I didn't pay enough attention to you. So in a way it was my fault. Kind of like this time too. If I wasn't rushing you out of the closet, you probably wouldn't have hit your head. It was my fault, wasn't it? Kind of was, wasn't it? Wollen. I don't think you realise it, but you're always thinking about other people. Even after all these years. You're rushing to help me, even if I'm just being clumsy. You're really a sweetheart. Don't call me that. Yeah. I don't really do this kind of thing all the time. Yeah, I guess when it comes to you, it just feels kind of natural. But, well, yeah. Before I know it, I'm treating you like that. I guess that's what happens when you've been friends for so long. Really? Maybe you're right. Wollen. I'm so glad that nothing's changed between us. Do you think it'll be like this forever? Forever? If I'm honest to myself, there's no telling where we'll end up for college or after that. So it wouldn't be fair for me to make any promises, but, well, I hope so. It's been like this, it's been this long already, right? I can't imagine you ever changing, so my hopes are up. I'm so happy. Sari has a whimsical expression in her eyes. We remain silent for a moment. She's so silly and clumsy on the outside that when I see her deep in something, 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 it makes me not want to disturb her. I guess we should go back. I don't want to marry Monica, you know? Good luck with that. She's gonna see your forehead either way. Oh god. Not if I hide it under my bangs, teehee. Oh, that was nice. I like that. Sari hops to her feet. Ah! Oh. She clutches her forehead again. Don't stand up so fast after hurting yourself. Oh. Well, I guess it's too late now. Anyway, let's go. Dropping at Cedar. I follow Sayori out of the classroom. Sari plays with her bangs to try and hide the bump, but without much success. In a moment, we make it back to the club room. She's not going to think we like wax her, did she? Ah, oh, you're back. Good timing, I was just ready to start sharing our poems. Eh? Sorry, your forehead. It's fine, don't worry about. I was playing with the crayons and smacked my forehead into the shelf. She doesn't believe us. We think she thinks we're being naughty. We're into like BDSM or something. Well, anyway, were you able to find everything we needed? Also, I kind of wanted to do that with you. Uh-huh, we have it right. Eh? Sorry frantically glances around herself. I forgot all other stuff. Calm down, Sayori. I have it all right here. I found the poster too. Ah ha ha! Ha 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 ha! Sounds like you ended up doing all the work, Willem. Where are you posting, Tyrion? Well, Sayori, if I fail to come up with an excuse for Sayori, I made it an adventure. Yeah, that. Ah ha ha! 
Okay. Okay. Yeah, sure. All right. Um, in any case, good work. I'll start working on the posters tonight. Me too. Okay, everyone. Are you ready to share your poems? Guess I should. Yeah, I guess I probably should grab one. Oh, I binned it. All right, then. After making sure the crayon box is closed tightly, I return to my seat. I mean, obviously. Obviously, Siren. Clearly. <coughs> well, um, I really love your poems. I can't believe you've been hiding these from me. Eh? I'm not hiding anything. But your poems are so good. Yesterday's, and this one too. You can't tell me you haven't done this before. <laughs> I mean, you're really the only one who feels that way, so... Eh? No way! Not even Natsuki! Well, I guess she's the least likely to admit how much she likes something. But I don't think it's that. What do you mean? Well, guess I'll be honest about it. It's a lot easier to write poems when I'm thinking about you. Eh? Wah, 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 wah. It's like Luigi. Oh. Stop thinking weird things, idiot. I just mean that you're a really expressive person. How am I supposed to write poems about my own stupid life? But you, somehow, you make everything in your life an adventure. Even the little things. Like cooking! Let's not talk about that. It's me! Holy shit, it's Twitch chat and me talking in an interaction. They want cooking with Willen through. This is my first playthrough, yeah. Fucking love this expression, by the way. Eee! <laughs> so, yeah. I guess what I'm saying is I can feel more feelings through you than I can through myself. I have that kind of weird connection. I am this character. It's not- it's your fault for getting in my business all the time. Eh? I don't know if I understand. <sighs> You'll never understand when I try to explain things to you, do you, Sayori? I pat her on the head. It's alright, Twitch chat. It's alright. Cooking with Woolen 3 will come at one point. Ah ha 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 ha! Hey! I'm not a kid, you know. I'm at least 16 according to the rule book. Are you sure about that? Uh, maybe, uh... Right? She starts fiddling with her pencil between her hands. Hey, Woolen. Will you give me your poem? I kind of want to keep it. Huh? Why? Because, well, it's the first time you've written something for me. Hehe. <laughs> Oof. There you go. Sayuri, you completely misunderstood. I didn't write this for you. Hehehehe. <laughs> uh, are you even listening anymore? Well, whatever. I'll give it to you when we go home. Really? What? That's a snap, kind of. Ah! I broke my pencil. She bends down to pick up the piece she dropped, but being inattentive of her surroundings, she bumps right into me. <laughs> Sorry. It's fine. It's fine. I'll get it for you. I bend down and pick up the broken pencil. Sayuri clutches the desk behind her but to support herself, knees shaking. I'm a little clumsy today. Ah ha ha ha! Let's sit down, Sayori. Yeah! I grab her arm and sit her down at the desk. Cooking with thigh highs. <laughs> Alright. Anyway, I still haven't read your poem. Oh! Sorry, I forgot about that. But it's not as good as yours. Jeez, don't worry. I'm sure I'll like it. <clears throat> Bottles. What bottles? I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all of my dreams. She's hidden inside of her own head, isn't she? Little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger to pluck one out. It's warm and tingly. But there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts all in bottles all in a row. She's clearly bottling up her feelings. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes a friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. All right. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go like exploring a dark cave. Discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging. Scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through the locked front door. Finally. All done. I open up, and in come my friends. 
In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically put them from the shelf, one after the other, holding on, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one but go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, in shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're shouting, pleading, something. All I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. I wrote that. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write down my best poem ever? I mean, I didn't expect this. Monica taught me a whole lot. Ah, oh, I see. And I've been really in touch with my feelings lately. Do you want to, like, want to, like talk or something? What's wrong? There's like, clearly something horrible going on. Yeah, it's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe just because I'm used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. She wants to let her friends in. And she's worried. She's worried her friends won't accept her for who she is. The point is, it came out good and you should be proud of it. Oh, thanks. Okay, a little bit of the way there. She's helped one of her friends. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah, writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Ahaha, <laughs> don't, <get laughs> yeah, don't get ahead of yourself. She's always got the habit of getting obsessed with something and then dropping it less than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Alright, let's show it to... Um, Monica didn't get any love last time. You can have it this time. Hi again, Bottom. How's the writing going? Alright. Yeah, it's going alright. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe you'll come up with a masterpiece and play it in double time hidden hard rock. I wouldn't count on that. You'll never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. Yeah. I give my poem to Monica. Alright. It's pretty good. It makes me think of Sayori, like the other one you wrote. You two are like the dynamic duo. It's me and Pyro Joe. Back for more. It's Pyro Joe with boobies. Aha! That's kind of exaggerating it. Yeah, probably. But you do spend a lot of time with her in this club, don't you? Then again, I don't blame you for being a little shy. I'm not shy. It's just... Ha ha ha! I was just teasing. I know it just takes a little bit of time to make friends with everyone. But Yuri and Natsuki are super interesting people, so don't be afraid to give them a share of time. And you can talk to me every now and then again too, so... I'm not like super unapproachable or anything, am I? No, it's nothing like that. It's just it's a visual novel and you can't split the paths. You kind of have to keep going down one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you understand. I really didn't mean it like that. No, don't worry. I get what you're saying. Well, alright. Well, anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. <coughs> Save me. The colours, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colours. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Thank you. Like playing a cardboard, like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaninglessness. Load me. It's even more abstract than your last one, eh? Ahaha! I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just the kind of thing I've never really seen before. Yeah, this is like really well written, isn't it? I like playing with my space in the book. Thank you, Star Etchy. Thank you. I really like the music. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Thank you, by the way. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. Load me, Willen. <laughs> Excuse me? The way I wrote the lines really short make me feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. Ahaha! 
Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling. Oh, this thing's making me really, really appreciate poems. Holy shit. Or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do it again. We're not gonna do that again. Sometimes you'll find yourself fating a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when you might change your mind. Or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even around writing? What am I even talking about? I'm not gonna load that. I'm sure she wanted me to like save and load there, but I'm not gonna do that. That's my advice for today. I bet I had like some like little like flavor text where she's like, oh, nice loading. Ooh. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Well, she said save. It's not really a difficult choice, but I'll save. Um, Yuri. Luri's feeling a bit sad today. Let's see what you've written for today. Hmm. Well done, Wollen. Your skills are already improving. Really? Thanks, Yuri. Coming from you, that means a lot. Eh? It's nothing. I'm just really happy to help inspire fellow writers. I'm enjoying this. This is a good game. I know you're new to this, so don't worry so much if it feels like you can't get your poem to feel perfect. You don't need to feel afraid or to be a bit more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Just letting your mind wander through your feelings and write down the things you see and hear. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. I see. It's certainly an interesting technique. Thank you for sharing. I have, uh, well, an example of that, if you'd like to read it. Of course. Is this the poem you wrote for today? Alright. <clears throat> the Raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My atten- oh, she's guilty of her weight. My attention was caught by the scattering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread. My subconscious well aware of my still consequences. Well aware that a raccoon is fed and will always come back for me. The enticing beauty of a cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity. The raccoon, an urge. The moon increments its phrase and reflects that much more light of my cutting knife. The very same light that glisters, glistens in the eye of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft, the raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I merely projected my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could, you could say we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows its excitement, a rush of blood. Classic Pavlovian conditioning. Pavlovian. It's the dog and the bell. I slice the bread, and I feel myself again. I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. Yeah. I can see that, yeah. Alright, um, wait, give us a sec. Doggo's returned. Oof. Just let that sink in for a second. There we go. Hey, there we go. Good doggo. You'll always be there for me. There we go. All right. I can see that. It's a bit more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is even about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. You stab your friends or something? Like, yeah. I take it at face value. Then I can't figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people too can relate to in their own way. All right. I want to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. Are you a psychopath? It's those sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. Pavlovian's dog was a thing where they like rang a dinger, they ran a, was it the dinner bell thing with the dog? They like whack the dog and then the dog hated it. And if they rang the dinner bell, the dog would know it was getting fed and it was like a horrific experiment. Um, so I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? Because they're embarrassing. Yes, yes they are, yes. 
and people would make fun of me. Yes, yes, no. They'd probably, like, ask you what's wrong, probably. Don't you have anything like that, Woolen? Well, I guess I do? I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdnessness, I would probably hate myself. I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad to hear you're a good listener. Alright, that's okay. They rang the bell and the dog salivated. Oh yeah, that was the dog salivating. Which was the one where they, like, injured the dogs? That was a different one. That wasn't Pavlovian. Hmm. Well, it's not really any worse than your last one. Well, I can't really say it's any better right there. <laughs> Phew, what? Well, if anything isn't a train wreck, I'll take it as a win. And I get the feeling you're probably the most critical. Hey, what makes you... Wait, maybe that was a compliment? Aha! Glad to see someone recognizes my experience. Oh ho 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 ho! Well then, keep practicing and maybe you'll be as good as me someday. That's, uh. Something tells me she completely missed the point. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. You think so? Yeah. I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might as well be on the same wavelength. But you never really struck me as her type. Sayori has a type all of a sudden? Yeah. Oi. Well, I don't know, but honestly, how can someone so, uh, fluffy, so spend so much time with someone like- Excuse me, I'm sitting here at, like, ten o'clock playing an anime game. I'm fluffy enough. Maybe not, I mean, you know. I guess she's dragging around like a dead weight. Thanks for that. That was a little- yeah, that was a little rude. Come to think of it, by the way, if it wasn't for me, she was probably just fly away, like letting go of a balloon. You could say we take care of each other in our own way. Well, whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah. I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. Amy likes spiders. Oh, um... They got a hundred beagles to chain smoke. I think it was a different one. It was nasty. You need to sleep now. Good night, Lilo and Stitch. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Heard of it. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favourite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands were probably gross. That's why I'm not like that's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if she doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. I'm not going to tell anyone. And I'm going to tell everyone. It's anime. Spider is spider is anime in this. Like, it's an she likes anime. And everyone actually thinks everyone hates the fact that she likes anime. And that it doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. And that no one else knows she likes anime. She thinks that everyone else is going to avoid talking to her. And that everyone talks behind her back. The real sense is that... Obviously, it probably doesn't matter, but yeah, I think that's what we can take out. This one's quite easy to read, I think. Not bad, right? It's been- it's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realise how stupid they're being. Like anyone would agree that the subject of this poem isn't an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course. It's how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter. It can be about anything. She's a... She fucking... We're boobing it. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid people find out they make fun of or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes, as long as they're not hurting anymore, and it makes them happy. Yeah, alright, I can acquiesce. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. All of you, right? Your likings are very weird things, alright? Strange man reading a really weird voice for like two hours. Yuri wrote about something similar today. Um? Did you say Yuri? Yeah. She said her poem was about an unusual hobby of hers. I didn't really get it, but she said something similar to you. Ah, oh, they're more similar than they let on. That people shouldn't make each other feel insecure about those things. Really? They're learning, they're connecting through poem. Isn't that wonderful? Well, I mean, Yuri's pretty weird, so I doubt she has the weirdest hobbies. She's... 
you're doing your poem thing. Not that there's anything wrong with it. Oh. It's not like I would judge her or anything. She has trouble finding words. She's realized, she's realized what she's been. I guess I should try not to be so mean to her. If she feels insecure about her weird behaviors and stuff. I mean, I always hate people who make me feel insecure. And Yuri makes me feel insecure yesterday. But the way you put it, sounds like she's learnt her lesson. Well, I would say so. Even if her writing style is pretty different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the message in your poem. It's what I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like, conveying emotions is important. But I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm going to write a good one for tomorrow, so look forward to it. It's about you and your inner weave. Alright, everyone. We're about done reading everyone else's poems, right? I have something extra planned for today, so if everyone could come and sit at the front of the room. This is about the festival. Well, sort of. Oh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together something good in a few days. Wait. There we go. Let's properly cover it. There we go. Hello? Alright. That's a concern of mine as well. It's getting embarrassed. I don't really know what to do about last minute preparations. What are you doing, OBS? My OBS window is not happy right now. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, alright? We don't need much more than a few decorations. Sari has been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets so we can give out during the event. Alright, that's great and all. That doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Oh, sorry. I thought you heard about it. You're ready. We're going to be performing! Performing! Puh... Uh, Monica. Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us is going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sari's putting up all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare. 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 Ahead of time. Holy shit. Eee. <laughs> Sari, who's been colouring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't... You didn't already start putting up those posters, did you? Well, I did. Do you really think that's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There is no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do anything like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Ooh. Guys. No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until a couple of days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So, I'm sorry. Ooh. But, I still think we should try to give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the face of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it'll inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah. It's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right, these are the words she likes. And for the reasons that we're all in this club today, don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to feel the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if it takes that, all of it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Dot dot dot. Being intimate with yourself. Lewd. Alright. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sairi and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Ooh. Alright, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Ooh. She, de she dejectedly glances around everyone else's expectant faces. Yeah, very expectant. So, I, I guess I don't really have a choice. Aha! That's every- ha 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 You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. No, 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 no way! Monica, this is just too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to show it in front of strangers? Oh, no -y. <laughs> Don't worry. Thank you, Intricate TF2. I'll stop- I'll, st <laughs> I'll start off to help everyone feel a little bit more comfort. Comfortable. Not fuck. It's not, it's not that kind of game. 
Can I go next? Aha, of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in her mind for herself. A woolly wave. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. <coughs> Good night, find. Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line that she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone else has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the rec recitation. The floor is applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That was so good, Monica! Aha! Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? I'll go next. Ooh, ah! Yuri's all fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... You can do it, Yuri. It's called uh, After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she begins reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she so suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering voice and words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside of her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her, as if she bewildered, even herself. Ooh, yeah, there you go. Aye, it's up to me to save this situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Etc. I'm not going to do it, it's late, but you know. Everyone joins me afterwards, and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were so caught off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was, that was pretty good. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. There goes gravity. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. All right. I guess I'm next then. Sairi pops out of her chair and cheerfully walks up to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ah. Ah ha ha ha! Oh, sorry. I giggle. All right. Hee <laughs> hee. Sayori. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Ah. Try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror, or inside of your own head. It's your poem, so it will come out best that way. I see. I see. Alright then. Um, <clears throat> Somehow, it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery, like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it, but hearing it come from her voice almost gives it a new meaning. Maybe this is what Sari meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. She finishes and we applaud. I did it. Good job, Sari. Hehehe, <laughs> even Woolen liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh? I didn't really understand. Um, I don't know how long I'm going to go on for. I'm going to get to the end of the chapter, and then I'm going to see where the time takes us. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where it has that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. It might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Ah, oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that sort of thing. It's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. <laughs> then next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little bit more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Alright, alright then. Who's next? Netsuki. <laughs> Don't make me go before Woolen. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Woolen lower everyone else's expectations a little more before I have to do it. Alright. Natsuki. It's fine. It's fine. I might as well get it over with. It's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Alright. <clears throat> everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. 
I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry I'm not really as good as everyone else is. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. Thanks, Monica. That's something that'll improve over time. Yeah, maybe. Alright then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... Uh... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting? Humph. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. These are all real poems, aren't they? Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little enthused, her poem has a rhythm and a rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words, feel, the words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She huffs back into her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say? You'd better not make, you'd better not make me do that again. The viewers have snowboarded and he's the number one Doki Doki streamer. Wonderful. It's working. Oh, well. Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people would be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people, but when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope you at least have an idea of what's coming in now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival. I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably be find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. What is wrong with your skirt? Yeah, no problem. It's like anti-gravity sky. Alright then. Alright everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll, pl we'll finish planning it tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. Alright. Yeah. Let's stand up. There's no way we'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sire and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. Hmm? An impressing moniker. Then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yeah. Look at you two, always going to home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? Hee hee hee. Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be nice, though. Well, ah, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Willem. You don't have to say it. Whatever, let's go already. I don't like this girl. She's great. I'll walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed, but today, Sayori is a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Oh, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I mean, she fumbles with her words. So let's just say that one day, Yuri asked to walk home with you. No? Oh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. Hehehe. <laughs> I would still walk home with Sayori. Sayori? You really think I would ditch you for Yuri? Eh? But she's so beautiful and smart. Jeez. I already see her in the club every day. Besides, Yuri City seem to like going home together. I wouldn't ruin that just for you. You're so silly, Willen. You think about me so much sometimes. Yuri would deserve it if she wanted it, so... Sayori, I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure you out sometimes. Sorry. Besides, what's the point in speculating something that's never going to happen? Hmm. The conversation trails off. It's kind of a weird thing for Sayori to care so much about. But I want to respect her and keep her happy too. Then again, the festival's only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time? Alright. Um, so, chat, I have a question to ask you. How much longer is left in the game? As we have currently streamed for around two hours, Normally I stream for around three. If there's like three hours left, I can just finish it today. But if it's four hours, it's probably a good time to cut it here and then continue it next week. I've got a question. What would you like? Would you like me to play for like another two hours? Or like, would you like me to come back next week? I want to hear this. Give me like, I'll give you like 30 seconds. I'm just sitting around some tea. You're around halfway. 
Keep going, it's only two more hours, it's only two more hours. Continue, continue, keep going, you're only two more hours and enough time to finish it. Um... Alright. Okay. Two hours more, go Woolen. Alright. I will... Do... Finish it in one sitting. As if there's- if I can finish it within two hours, that makes sense. Plus, I guess it's already had its, like, hooks sunk in. If we wait a week, maybe it might have worn off a little bit. But what I will do is I'll post- like, I'll highlight the whole VOD and I'll put it on YouTube, so if you miss the stream, because you need to sleep, maybe you live in Europe and it'll end at, like, 2am, uh, you can watch the VODs on, like, YouTube or Twitch. But yeah, I will continue here. Yeah, boy. I'm sorry everyone needs sleep. Alright. I'm actually quite enjoying it. I want to keep going. Alright then. I'm gonna- I'm gonna keep going. Like, 98% of people seem to say keep going. Alright then. Alright, alright, alright. So I need to try and think up words that Sayori might like. Um, how about... Sweet? Doki Doki? No? Okay, right. Childhood? Yeah, usual, usual, usual stuff to stuff. Uh, Fluffy? No, that's not it. Alright then. Um... Twelve? Effligent? Aura? Electricity? Giggle? No, that's not it. Alright. Anxiety? No, that's not it. Hmm. Embrace. Wonderful. Play. Hope. Extraordinary. Eternity. Nope. Okay. Okay. All the all the sign of eternity words are, are the purple girls. It's Yuri's stuff. Valentine. No. Nope. All right then. Amazing. Pleasure. Pleasure. All right then. Um. Friends. Love. Awesome. Together. Daydream. You need to get up early because you have homework to do, but you want to stay. Alright then. Yeah, I'm going to keep going then. You want to watch the live reaction? Alright then. Oh man. Get the cursor off the screen. I'm the last one here again. Don't worry, I just walked in too. My spacebar's broken. Were you just practicing the piano again? Yeah. Haha. <laughs> you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking up piano. Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember that club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival too. I can't wait for the festival while she's happy. It's gonna be great. Yeah, I'm sure it will. Eh? Weren't you complaining about it just yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not asking about our part of the festival. It's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, don't they usually have fried squid? S squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? You, of all people. Eh? I don't say I wouldn't like it. But besides, what do you mean by you of all people? Because it's right in your name. Mon Ika. Oh, Ika is Japanese for squid. Eh? That's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. Never mind. Let's just focus on our event for now. Hehehe. <laughs> Alright, fun. Your reaction aren't as fun as Yuri or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me. Where is Sayori anyway? Ah, there you are. You're glad you've got me doing the speaking. He understands the language from a very, very basic level. Sayori is sitting at a desk in the corner of the room, looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I wave my hands in front of her face. I think Ika is Japanese for squid, because Squid Girl was Ika Musume, wasn't it? Something like that. I wave my hand in front of her face. Eh? You're spacing out again. Ah, ah. Hee <laughs> hee, sorry. Don't remind me. You can go and talk with everyone else. You're kind of sad you got that joke as a Belgian. <laughs> is everything else alright? Of course. Why wouldn't it be? It feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. You worry too much about me. It's fine, see? She shows me a big smile. Ha ha! Taiko, Taco is octopus. I think Taco might be octopus. I actually don't know. I know Taiko is drums, because there's a game in Osu, isn't it? You let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, alright. If you say so. I worriedly glance at Sayori before turning back towards everyone else, but the conversation has already dispersed, and with everyone else back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Sayori recently. Since they've been preparing for this festival, they might be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who is shuffling through some papers at her desk. Wollen, what's up? Hey, this must seem a little strange, but... 
Have you noticed anything about Sayuri lately? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into it a little bit much, but she seems a little downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. She appears across the room at Sayuri, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there is something on her mind. But I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you, Wollen. You certainly seem to know her a lot more than me. Yeah, but she's never really liked this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. But this time when I asked her, she was really dismissive. I'm sorry if it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything about it, so I'll drop it for now. No, no. It's important to me too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care with her about the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Eh? Sure about that. She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just has a hard time bringing up the person of interest. P person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm just saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, Woolen. Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but Shira talks to more about you than anything else, you know? Eh? She's probably much happier ever since you joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. Sari is always like that. She's always full of sunshine. It's not any different now than it's always been. Hee hee hee. You're so funny, Woolen. Have you thought that maybe you've always seen her as so cheerful because that's just how she is when she's around you? Ah, I said too much. I'm sorry, what do I know anyway? I mean, I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget what I just wrote. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think too much about it for now. <clears throat> Alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she's had to forget about it, but I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayuri is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sayuri and gently talk to her. But she's keeping her voice so quiet I can't hear it from here. I sigh and let myself down. I know Sayuri told me not to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else, but that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her? That I'm letting this weigh me down so much. Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. But there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Alright everyone. After some time passes, Monica calls out to the club room. Why don't we share our poems now? Before I know it, everything's back to normal. Everyone goes to receive, retrieve their poems and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica and she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayori. Let's, uh, let's do a little, a little save. Yeah, let's just show it to Sayuri. This is your best one so far. It's really, really nice, Willen. Thanks. Mmm. Sorry, you've been a little quiet today. Is everything alright? Eh? <laughs> of course. Everything is fine. <laughs> Maybe I'm just a little tired today. Hee hee hee. Do you want a nap or something? No. That's silly. Don't worry about me, okay? I only want to see smiles on your faces. Ah, oh, she doesn't want me to worry about her. Hey, Woolen. I'm still a little surprised. I really thought you would try writing your poems like the way Yuri does. Or even Natsuki. But in the end, yeah. I guess you're the one who likes this the most. Why? You don't want me t to get close with everyone else? Wait. Of course I do. But that doesn't mean I need to try so hard to impress them. I still understand you the most, Sayori. I know you have to sometimes put up with me. And I have to sometimes put up with you. But we have a wavelength or something, and this is how the poem came out. Sometimes it feels like the only thing exciting in my life, and sometimes it's easier to write about you. Sayori? N no Woolen. I don't deserve this. You're too nice to me. Why are you doing this? She has trouble keeping her voice steady all of a sudden. If you had fun with everyone else instead, this would be so much easier. Sayori. I glance around the room to make sure no one else has noticed this. Sayori. I've probably never said this before, but I don't understand what you're feeling right now. Tell me what will cheer you up. She shakes her head. She sniffles and keeps shaking her head. Finally, she gathers herself and puts on a smile. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> it's nothing, Willem. It's just a little rain cloud. I'm sorry you had to see that. Ah ha ha ha. Just smiles for everyone, okay? That's all that matters. Go play with everyone else. I'm going home a little bit early today. Sayori, tell Monica I wasn't feeling alright. See you tomorrow. Alright. Well done, Willem. 
You've definitely improved your writing over the course of these few days. Has my advice been helpful to you? Yeah, definitely. I'm glad. Sharing our writing like this is a lot more fun and rewarding than I anticipated. I need to remember to thank Monica. I think we all felt a little awkward at first. But now it seems like everyone is enjoying sharing their writing and seeing what others think. I probably won't do a multi-playthrough. I think we'll just make it so all the decisions are probably final for now. I guess we can't really disagree. I was afraid this whole thing would be a chore, but it's a great way for me to spend some personal time with all the girls in the club. It's been fun getting to know everyone and their writing. And I guess doing some writing myself. Well, have you learned anything about yourself, Willen? Yeah. Well, you know how I like to say that writing is a very personal way to get in touch with yourself? In the end, it doesn't matter if you're a good writer or a bad writer. Even my opinions are just opinions, you know. As always, I believe what's most important is exploring and discovering yourself. That's comforting. I'm kind of afraid of disappointing you in some way or another. Eh? Why me? Well, you're always so sophisticated with your writing, and have the most advice to share. Is that so? She thinks for a good minute. That must be terrible. Eh? For me, to have become someone whose opinion is fearsome? How unlikable of me. Yuri. It's not as bad as you're making it sound in your head. I just meant that I respect your opinion. I see. I'm sorry that I always overthink and come to these thoughts of conclusions. I'm just a little used to it. Hey Frank. Overthinking. Being disliked. Yuri. What am I saying? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bring that up. Let's move on. Alright. Do you want to share your poem now? Alright. Here. Did Sari not write a poem? Huh. Beach. A marvel, millions of years in the making, where the womb of Earth chaotically meets the surface. Under a clear blue sky, an expanse of bliss, but beneath grey, rolling clouds, an endless enigma. The easiest world to get lost in is one where everything can be found. She likes books. Only one can build a sand castle where the sand is wet, but the sand is wet. The tide comes. Will it gently lick at you? Will it gently lick at your foundations until you give in? Or will it sudden send a sudden wave? Will a sudden wave send you crashing down in the blink of an eye? Either way, the outcome is the same. Yet we still build sand castles. I stand where the foam wraps around my ankles, where the toes squish into the sand. The salty air is therapeutic. The breeze is gentle yet powerful. I sink my toes into the ultimate boundary line, tempted by the foamy tendrils. Turn back and I abandon my peace to a road at the shore. Please? Drift forward, and I return to Earth forevermore. She likes reading books. Festival hasn't started yet. I'm aware that the beach is kind of an insane thing to write about, but I did my best to take a metaphorical approach to it. You say that you didn't even want to write about it. Oh, you haven't heard? After yesterday, Natsuki and I, well... It was amusing we both wrote about something similar in such different ways, so we wanted to write about the same topic as each other again. I suppose to better compare the differences in our writing or thought processes. Anyway, it was her idea. Knowing her, it's no surprise if she'd want to do the same thing like that. She probably just wants to show off. It's not like I have a particular interest in her writing style, I just went with her request. But, well, I suppose it's not bad about to write about something simple on occasion. It can be refreshing, you know? It's good for me to calm my thoughts once in a while. Yeah, I agree. Thanks for sharing. I'll show it to Monica. Hello, Willen. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well, being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people? I'll have to give it some thought. Alright, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. Ahaha! Anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. I'll let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. Ahaha! It's kind of funny. How so? No, not the poem. I mean, it's funny how your poem and Sari's poem have been getting more and more similar to each other each and every day. I'm surprised you're so in sync with her. What poem? And then again, you've been spending a lot of time together lately, haven't you? I guess you could say that. Although we kind of grew up as best friends, I haven't been seeing her as much this last year. But since I joined the club, we've been spending a lot of time together again. I see, I see. That reminds me. How about how Sari's been a little off today? Yeah, did she tell you something? Thank you very much. Oh. Well. Oof. Thank you, Mike Wazowski from Monsters, Inc. Well. 
Well, then you haven't been flirting with her, have you? Of course. Of course not, yeah. I've been treating her like I always do. Alright. Just making sure. I know how much you care about her. It would be terrible if something bad happened to her, so keep an eye on her. Sari's been acting so much happier ever since you joined the club. What could have made- what could have happened all of a sudden? Was it the walking home decision? This wasn't really the time to be talking about this. Anyway, I'll share my poem with you now, alright? Um, alright. The lady who knows everything. An old tale tells of a lady who wanders earth. The lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, all purpose. And all that was ever sought. And here I am, a feather, lost adrift the sky, victim of the currents of wind. Day after day I search, I search with a little hope, knowing legends don't exist, but when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains, the last dim star glimmering in the twilight sky. Until one day, the wind ceases to blow, I fall, and I fall and fall and I fall even more gentle as a feather. A dry quill, expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger. The hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I'm thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. <coughs> I have found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning. There is no purpose. We only seek the impossible. I am not your legend. Your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back afloat, and I pick up a gust of wind. You know, I feel like learning and looking for answers are the sorts of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything. It was sort of on my mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put too much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical. Because if we had all the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's only one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in this club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. <laughs> are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you'd know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? Ah, <laughs> yeah, that. All right, we. Here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid it's not going to be that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a whole lot easier. Because instead of just telling you that your writing is good, or okay, or bad, they'll want to focus more on everything that went into it, and the things that you can work on. It's so much more encouraging that way, and it will make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. That's some good advice. This one's alright. Alright. Well, yeah. About as good as yesterday's, anyway. I see what you're going for, but it's just not really my style. I mean, that's fine. I'm mostly just glad you're trying a little bit. Well, of course I'm at least trying. Why are you so emotionally invested in my poems, anyway? Isn't that more of a compliment to me? Eh? No, gross. It's not like I care or anything. It's just that one of us in the club has to make sure you're not slacking off. Really? Well, what if you just ended up scaring me off anyway? That's, uh... It's not like you would actually do that. Yeah, you're right. It's kind of fun to hang out here, even if it's, I have to put up with you. <laughs> Gah. Natsuki's elbow connects with my stomach. Oh god. Oh. Maybe I won't mind scaring you away after all. I was only joking. Oh, I know. Don't worry. I was too. Ah ha ha! Ha 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 How the hell do you call that a joke? That seriously hurt. Well, maybe it was funny to her. I guess that's kind of the point. I should really just watch my mouth around Natsuki. Anyway. Natsuki holds a poem out to me like nothing ever happened. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll be your beach. Your mind is so full of troubles and fears that diminished your wonder over the years. But today I have a special place, a beach for us to go. A shore reaching beyond your sight, a sea that sparkles with brilliant light. 
The walls in your mind will not melt away before the sunny glow. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about every day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way that you had thought had left you long ago. Let's bury your heavy thoughts in piles of sand, bathe in sunbeams and hold my hand. Wash your insecurities in the salty sea and let me see you shine. Let's leave your work memories in a footprint trail, set you free in a windy sail, and remember the reasons you're wonderful when you press your lips to mine, they're lesbian. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about every day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart drop and leap in a way you had thought had left you long ago. But if you let me by your side, your own beach, your own escape, you'll learn to love yourself again. All right. I felt like I kept writing about negative things, so I wanted to write something about a nice message for once. Besides, the beach is awesome. Kinda hard to write anything ter uh, negative about the beach. Well, Yuri's take on it was a little more solemn. Well, that's... Jeez, you better not have said anything bad about mine. After all, she was the one that wanted us to write about the same topic. They both said the other thing. You really... You can really see her doing that, too. Making us write about a simple topic, then trying to impress me by coming up with something all fancy? Well, it's not like I care. I just did it anyway. I mean, I guess mine ended up being kind of metaphorical, too. But there's nothing wrong with doing that once in a while. At least it was good practice. Alright. Alright, you three. We're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't you start figuring out- Hold on a second. Is it just me or did you say something strange right now? Eh? Something just sounded a little unusual. That's right. You deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. <laughs> catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez. Why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Ooh. Stagnating air is a common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. In your books, maybe. Look, the only thing different is that Sayori isn't here. Ah. Seems you're right. Sayori's helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around. Where'd she run off to, anyway? I thought she just went off to pee. Natsuki, please, show some decency. Oh, come on. Ah, she actually wasn't feeling too well and went home early. Is that so? I hope she's alright. Seriously? Of all the times to not go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well. So much for you two being all lovey-dovey. Oh, no. First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And second, she's been kind of avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. Ooh. That curious expression coming from Yuri, of all people. Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier, and everything is fine. What did she say? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparations, so... Let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. Uh, I know what I'm doing. That's right, Natsuki will be making cupcakes, but we might need a lot of them and different flavours. Can you handle that by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted. And as for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all of the poetry pamphlets. Sayuri will be helping me design them. As for Yuri... Yuri, you can... Guys? Can I help you come up with something for Yuri? I... I'm useless. No. That's not it at all. You're the most talented person here, you know. Now Natsuki's pounding too. Jeez. Even I can tell now. I guess I never give Sayuri enough credit, but I can tell things are even harder for you when she's not around. Ah. Oh, that might be the case. But if I can't also be a leader on my own, then... I won't grow up as a person. So, Yuri, you have beautiful handwriting, don't you? So, you should make some banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. Atmosphere? About that. I... I love atmosphere. Yuri's expression suddenly changes as she stares at the desk in focus and begins nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great. You'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you, Woolen. The one that is truly useless. Aha! -ha! Don't say that. In fact, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. You'll probably go a long way to help one of them a hand. You could help me out as well. I'd really appreciate of that. Ah, that's... It's more like I'm suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members. How on earth are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? Ah, I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. 
Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I could give you. It's not like Monica's going to give me a choice, and you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway. She tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um, if I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle... You would like to handle the baking on your own. Woolen may not like to be around if you only make him out to be a nuisance, so therefore... He may be more suited to assisting with the decorations. Hold on, I never said that. How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway? Sounds more like you're just making for excuses for Woolen to... What are you saying? It would be extremely meticulous work. And baking isn't. And just what do you think? Come on, guys. Let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Woolen to decide how he'd like to contribute. He hasn't really got the chance to spend any time with me yet, you know? So I'm sure he's interested in... You literally just said... I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying though, geez, can we settle this already? Yeah. Woolen, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Ah, of course. Humph. Very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. Oh, God. Alright. Oh. You see, I want to help Sayori, but I'm pretty sure she doesn't, like, want me to, or, like, she doesn't want me to help other people. Can you just not- can you just straight up not pick Sayori? Everyone wants me to pick Monica. Knife wife for life. I don't know. I'm gonna ask Sayori. I mean, if it's gonna be anyone, I prefer helping Sayori. And we're already neighbours and... But Monica said... She said Sayori was helping her. Jeez. Do you really hate us that much? I didn't mean for this to be difficult. Okay, you actually can't pick Sayori. Oh, shit. Uh... Natsuki. I think I'm less... I'm the least likely to, like, be stabbed in the middle of the night. But was it you? You like stabbing raccoons? She's like strangely hopeful and she's just like got a funny tooth yuri natsuki 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 everyone really wants me to pick natsuki pick doggo can i pick the doggo is that is that a doable one you know what i like natsuki the second most we're gonna go natsuki no yuri no yuri cape yuri terrifies me i don't want her to stab me baking is a ton of fun you'll definitely agree also she likes cooking just a minute ago you were saying that that's because... Never mind, alright. Well, anyway. You'll be fine by yourself, right, Yuri? Of course. I'm used to it, after all. That's good. Even though Yuri is being melodramatic, it's a little hard not to feel bad. So that's everything, right? Anything else we need to talk about? No? I think that's it. Are you guys excited? Yeah! Everything except the performance is gonna be awesome. I don't think that really counts. What about you, Woolen? Me? Ah, oh, I guess you should say I'm interested to know how it'll turn out. It's good enough for me. What about you, Yuri? Yuri? She's still sulking. Natsuki starts pounting, too. It's not- I mean, it's not that big of a deal or anything. Well, it might just be that I think Yuri might be feeling a little underappreciated in general. Having to come up with something for her to do and nobody offering to help. That doesn't mean- Ooh. She glances back and forth with everyone with a worried expression. Look. Yuri, you really are the most talented one here, and and you're gonna help me make the event a lot more fun and welcoming. I mean, the cupcakes will be help a lot too, but you're gonna make the atmosphere special. That'll be really important for the way people feel during the performances. So, you need to stop being dumb and give yourself a little more credit. She releases her hands and turns around to face the other direction. You didn't really mean that, did you? Uh, not really, but... Monica and I are also taken aback by Natsuki's words. Natsuki, of all people, to be saying such encouraging things. But I begin to understand. She's trying to sound like Sayori. Even if it didn't work perfectly, I can tell she tried to say something Sayori would say at a time like this. Because Sayori always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. I'm sorry for being dumb. I'm going to do my best. And all of us are going to make it a really great event. Yeah. Yeah. I hope to see everyone do their best. And with that... There's nothing more for today. I guess it's time for us to head out. Alright, I'm staying here a bit longer. I barely got any reading today, so fair enough. There's nothing wrong with that. Alright. Everyone packs up their things. 
I start to follow Monica and Yuri out the door as they chat between each other. Where are you going? Eh? We still need to figure out our plans for this weekend. You literally would have gone home and realised you didn't even have a way to contact me. Oh, that's true. I have no idea that how that slipped my mind. Good thing I stopped you. I'm giving you my number, alright? You better not make it weird or anything. Why would I do that? Oof. <laughs> she gives me her number. Alright. I'm coming on Sunday. I'll bring all the ingredients. Wait. You're coming to my house? Well, yeah. What's wrong with that? I mean, I just figured out since I'm the one helping, I'll be going to your house. Yeah. Like I could have a guy over at my house. My dad would kill me. Really? That's kind of strict if you ask me. Yeah. How do you think I feel? I can't do anything with my dad at home. Anyway, I just needed to complain for a second. We have each other's numbers now. That's all that's needed from you. Guess I'll text you when I'm coming over. Alright, fine by me. Yeah. I'm only going to show you why I love baking so much. So you'd best look forward to it. Oh? Did you say you were going give to me, give me the dirty work? Well, I was just saying that. It's not like I could act like that in front of everyone. That was just looking forward to this. Wait, really? Well, kind of. Just because I never got to bake with someone else before. Well, that's all it is, so... Alright, I get it. Sorry for overreacting. Anyway, I'll be heading out now. See you on Sunday. Ah. Never mind. Oh, I can't believe this. Natsuki is going to be coming to my house on Sunday. Even though I would prefer to do this with Sayori, my anxiety still shoots through the roof. I guess I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point. But who knows what might end up happening when we're outside of school. Even She even told me she was looking forward to it. I shake my head. Why do I feel nervous that Sayori finds out about this? It's not that we feel that way about each other. Besides, like Monica said, this is about the club. I have nothing to worry about. If I just go with it, then I'll have a good time. It's... everything's okay. Okay. It's Sunday. I've been getting anxious about Natsuki's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself that there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. I wonder if she'll act any different if it's just the two of us. Meanwhile, she's been texting me a lot. We sent each other... One after exchanging numbers to double check, but it turned into a conversation. She's almost a different personality on the phone, using tons of emoji and cute language. She also really likes complaining about things, but I kind of saw that one coming. And putting Natsuki aside, I haven't heard a thing from Sayori since we left the club the other day. It's not like we text each other all the time or anything, but I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Between what Sayori said and what Monica said, is it really okay for me to put Sayori's feelings aside when she might need me? No, it's not. You should go and see. I decide to visit Sayori before Natsuki comes over. Rather than asking, I simply tell her I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reach her house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. Anyway, we used to play so often that we've made it a habit of simply entering each other's houses like we were family. The house is quiet. Sayori isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. It's already strange of her not to run down and greet me. I head to her bedroom, where I finally find her. Sayori? Hi, Willen. Oh, fucking hell, she's alright. Holy shit. I sit down in her room. She forces a smile, but it's easy to tell she's okay. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? Ah, I see you're right. It's been a long time. Not much has changed, really, has it? Her room's as messy as it's always been. I always recognise the same stuffed animals and wall decorations that she's had for years now. Hee hee hee. If you came over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. It's because I end up cleaning it for you. How come you so suddenly wanted to come over today? Aren't you supposed to see Natsuki today? Yeah, but... Wait, how did you know that? Sorry, you already left by the time we decided that meeting. Monica told me. It's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? Ah, that's true. But what about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course. I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan to meet up or anything. Ah, so it's just me and Natsuki then? Yeah. There's more silence between us. She stares in a random direction. Everything about her behaviour is extremely uncharacteristic. I finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing. After you left on Friday, when something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well, so... That's no good, Woolen. Why can't it just be like how it's always been? This is my fault. If I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings, if I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. 
You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't even been thinking about me right now. But this is just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being selfish. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. It just wants to torture me. Ehehe. <laughs> Sayori. I grab her by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Ah. Uh, ah ha ha. She gives me an empty smile. You really put me in a trap, Willem. But you're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. Seeing what? What are you talking about, Sayori? Hee hee hee. You're just going to make me say it, aren't you? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is... I've had a really bad... Oh, fuck off. <laughs> I've had a really bad depression my whole life. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days, I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put their energy into caring to waste by having them spend it with me? That's what it feels like. And that's why I just wanted to make everyone else happy. Without anyone worrying about me. I'm in shock. I can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible that she kept this from me the entire time I've known her? Did she really want so badly for me not to think about this about her? Why, Sayori? Eh? Why is it you've never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. Because if I knew, I would have done everything I could to support you. Even if there's only so much I could do, I would have tried a little bit harder to make my day a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend. All you had to do was tell me. You don't understand at all, Willen. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have to waste effort caring about me instead of doing the important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes, but it always feels like a bat swung against my head. Ha ha ha! That's why I wanted so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone else be happy is the best thing for me. But then I discovered something else too. Seeing you make friends and get closer with everyone else in the club feels like a spear going through my heart. So that's why. That's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. Ahaha. Ha. You're right that I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Sayori. But I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting, that's what I'll do. No, Woolen. There's nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that could have helped is if everything could have been like the way it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish. And I was punished by my heart hurting in a way I couldn't understand. And now you've come here and I've made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish. That's all I am. And that's why I'm going to accept these punishments. Because I deserve every last one. Without thinking, I grab her shoulders. This time I pull her into a tight embrace. Ah. Woolen. Sayori. I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, then that's just a bonus. But please never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Timing, my man. Thank you, there. Woolen. She isn't hugging me back. Despite my arms being wrapped around her, her arms remain at her sides. She starts sobbing next to my ear. No. Don't do this to me. Please don't do this, Woolen. I... She barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. But all I want is for her to know that I care. If you have it in you to call yourself selfish, then you have to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what it needs to change. I'll make those feelings go away. And if there's anything else you need me to do, then you'd better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Gently, Sari puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. 
It's all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, Willen. The only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But your hugs are so warm. And that's really scary too. She lets me go. As she does so, I let her go as well. The festival is tomorrow. Yeah. It's going to be fun, right? Yeah. How would you like for me to spend it all with you? Um... Ah. It's what I want. I promise. I think that would be nice then. Yeah. Sorry wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. There's still a doggo in the corner of the screen, isn't there? A little corner doggo. He's small. He hides and he protects. Of all days, this has to be the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel. No, don't. Please don't. If you did that, then I wouldn't be able to forgive you. But it's almost time for Natsuki to greet me at my house. At the very least, do you want to come along and help her out? It will be fun. To my surprise, Sari shakes her head. I'm so sorry. I don't know if that would be a very good time for me today. You understand, right? Oh. It's kind of hard for me to fully understand. But I'm trying my hardest. It's alright. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Alright. I look forward to it. I say goodbye to Sayori and exit her house. On the way home, I find myself still feeling uneasy. But it's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Natsuki is about to come over too. I think Sayori is right. I shouldn't be worrying too much, and we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. I spend only a few minutes back at home, anxiously waiting Natsuki's arrival. Before I know it, she texts me to let me know she's outside the front door. Without delay, I open the front door to let her in. Sup. Hey. Hello. I don't know what I was expecting, but seeing her in something other than a school uniform totally threw me off. Seeing her in such clu uh, cute clothes makes the uniform seem totally unfitting in comparison. Jeez, don't make it so awkward already. It's going to be a long afternoon, so don't be weird just because you're not used to seeing me outside of school. Anyway, I'm coming in. I see you bought a lot of stuff. Natsuki is carrying a large bag that is probably full of baking supplies. Well, I didn't want you to come all of this way just to find your kitchen wasn't equipped for the right job. You bought everything I asked you to, right? Holy shit, this man's got a nice kitchen. Yeah, I did. Yesterday, Natsuki asked me to buy a bunch of ingredients if I didn't have them already at home. Good. Glad I could count on you for your part. Well, of course. I'm surprised to hear Natsuki saying, suddenly saying that, rather than something snarky like she normally does. Could it be that she is a little different outside of school after all? Anyway, let's go to the kitchen. What? You're not going to offer to take this heavy bag from me? Where's your hospitality, Willem? Come on. Since when did I need to be a gentleman? I grab the bag she holds out to me. <laughs> this is ridiculously heavy. Ah ha 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 ha
And just because I don't have a mature and sexy figure like Yuri doesn't mean you should treat me like... Ah! She catches her words and her face turns red. Natsuki. Forget it. I didn't say anything. I should apologize. Eh? I appreciate that you were trying to be nicer. I should have been a bit more considerate too. But also, if that's what you're thinking, then you should know that there are tons of guys who are into body types like yours. I'm watching you, Twitch chat. Alright, I know. Ah. How would you know that, anyway? Just trust me on this one. Oh, God. Gross. <laughs> hey. Was that to me? Fuck off. <laughs> who else, man? Let's just get started already. Ah ha ha! You get all sour when a girl calls you gross. I finally found your weakness, Woolen. She smiles deviously. Please spare me. Well, if she decides to dish out more insults like that, then there's no way I'm fighting back. But she's satisfied, <laughs> she's satisfied enough for now. Finally starting to pull things out of her bag so we can get started. She is 18, so it's okay. That's what the developer said. Before long, the whole kitchen is a mess. Spoons, dirty bowls, flour, spilled liquid, and plastic bags are strewn about every countertop. The mixer isn't big enough to make all the batter at once, so we've had to do it several times. Meanwhile, she's babysitting all of my movements to make sure I don't mess up any of her precious baking. Why chat? Woolen, where did you put the food colouring? The batter's going to be in the oven soon, and I need to fill the trays. I think it's still in the bag next to the table. What are you using it for? To colour the batter, of course. I'm making each tray a different colour. That way, even if the flavours aren't different, everyone can still pick their favourite. And that's a cute idea. Are we doing anything like that with the icing? Do you want to? Ah, you're asking me? I don't really have a preference, so... Oh, come on. You're not putting any heart into this at all. Can't you at least try to have fun? I'm having fun. I'm not really sure what she's trying to get out of me. Meanwhile, I see her separate the batter into smaller bowls and put a few drops of food colouring into each. Ah, that does look pretty cool. See? It's not like baking is just about following instructions. The presentation is where you get to be creative and have the most fun. It's a million times more worth it if in, in the end, if just looking at it makes everyone else's eyes lighten up. Like the ones you made on my first day, eh? I recall Natsuki proudly presenting the cat-shaped cupcakes, a Sayori and Monica's delighted expressions. I wonder if I can make Natsuki proud like that too. Yeah. Maybe I'll use the food colouring then. Sounds like you're starting to understand. Just make sure you completely finish mixing the icing before you mess with food colouring. Yeah, it's getting there. We were just using the electric mixer for the batter, so I got stuck with a whisk and a huge bowl for the icing. Eh? Yeah? The icing's still all lumpy. Are you even trying? Well, yeah. I'll just take a little bit longer. Jeez, I'll be here all night if you do it like that. Here, look. She grabs the whisk from me and uses her other hand to tilt the bowl back. You really need to beat the crap out of it. <laughs> it's Bob Ross. It's anime Bob Ross. After a few seconds, the consistency of the icing has already improved. See? As if to emphasize, she sticks a finger inside the icing and pops it in her mouth. I reluctantly start to do the same. Hey, she grabs my wrist. I don't want your gross fingers in my icing. Your icing, eh? Are you forgetting who did all of the work? I start to fight back, trying to inch my finger towards the bowl. Don't make me beat the crap out of you next. I'd like to see you try. I push harder, just enough for my finger to reach the icing. I triumphantly scoop some with my finger, just as she tugs away with all her might. Ah! The force of Natsuki pulling me away causes me to stumble, making her stumble in return. Gross. You got it on my fa- oh, fucking hell. It's not gonna show a picture, it's gonna be fine, right? For, like, Twitch? There's a big glob of icing on Natsuki's cheek. Mmm. She tries to reach it with her tongue, but it's too far away. Jeez. You know what? Take this. She instead wipes it off with her finger before shoving her finger towards my own face. You wish. I'm faster. I grab her wrist with my hand before it reaches my face. 
Natsuki tries to use her other hand to fight back, but I grab that one as well. Okay, it's not that lewd. Ah ha 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 ha
Ooh, I wish I could have one now. Well, there's no reason you can't, right? I don't see any harm in that. Well, yeah, but my dad's making dinner tonight, so I really need to save my appetite. Ahaha! -ha. Sara is the exact opposite in that regard. If she was here, she'd probably down ten cupcakes already. And she would still eat the dinner. Oh, come on, that's just unhealthy. Besides, when my dad cooks, I need to eat as much of it as I can. Well, anyway. I was hoping we would have time for manga, but I need to be home for dinner. Ah, already. That's a shame. It's your fault for working so slowly. We should have thought about that. It's not like you'll always have this chance, man. As usual, she places the blame on me. You can bring the cupcakes tomorrow, right? If you and Sara each carry some, you could probably do it in one trip. Yeah, I can do that. And don't worry, I won't let her eat any. Aha ha! Ho ho! I wish she would listen to me the way she listens to you. Aha! Yes. I think back to the conversation I had with Sari earlier today. I felt so helpless. Sari always does listen to me, but what's the point if she felt... But at that point, it felt like she couldn't listen to me at all. Alright, I'm all packed up. Good work today. You too. I'll walk you out, I guess. Alright. And just like that, she's already about to leave. It feels like the afternoon went by in a flash. More than that, did I even take the opportunity to get closer to her, like I wanted? Well, I guess I'll be off then. Thanks for all the help and everything. I'll see you tomorrow. Wait. Eh? What you said before about not always having this chance. It doesn't have to be that way at all. I had fun today. You showed me how fun baking could be, like you wanted. But aside from that, you can come over any time, alright? I think that if possible, I'd like to spend more time like this. And if you want to read manga or go somewhere, uh... Do you really mean that? Natsuki looks at me tensely, like she's trying to hide her expression. Yeah. I want to spend more time with you. Woolen, I thought you only cared about getting this done. Ooh. I'm sorry I had to leave so early today. I didn't really want to. I would like to stay here longer if I could. I feel the same way as you, so... Oof. Wait, Natsuki. Standing inches from me, she looks up at me. Ooh, down, down from here, alright. I feel her fingers gently clutch at the sides of my shirt as if holding on to me. Her rose-coloured cheeks and matching eyes fill my vision, along with her slightly parted lips. What is happening? My head starts to get dizzy as I feel her soft breaths against me. I've felt it for a while now. Oof. She suddenly jumps back. Sasayori- oh, fuck off. Eh? Ah! Ah, uh, hi, Willen. Sayori. Just now we weren't- he 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 It's alright, Willen. I just stopped by to say hi. Ah. Well, you should have come a little earlier. Oh, really? That's too bad. Yeah, well, I'll just see you at the festival tomorrow, so it's fine. Just don't eat any cupcakes before then. Anyways, later. Oh, God, this is a zoom. Suddenly flustered, Natsuki hurries off, and Sayori waves goodbye. Sayori, I thought you didn't want to come over today. Aha, well... I've tried staying in my room, but the imagination was really being really, really, really mean to me. So I had to come here and see it for myself. See what? What are you talking about? You know, how much fun you were having with Natsuki. And how close you- I didn't make any decisions though, this happened automatically. It makes me very happy that you've made such good friends. That's all that matters to me. Tears start to fall down her face. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way, Woolen? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? It hurts. So much. Everything hurts so much. This would be much better if I could just disappear. Sorry, don't say that. It's true, Willem. If I wasn't here, you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being so selfish. Monica was right. I should just... Monica? Monica was right about what? Sayori. What I said before is true. I'm not going to let this continue. Caring about you like this isn't the burden your mind is making it out to be. It's something that makes me happy. It's something I wouldn't trade for anything else. So even if it takes an entire lifetime, I'm going to be by your side until you don't feel any more pain. But but she looks away. I put a hand on her shoulder to reassure her. I'm scared, Willen. I'm really scared. What are you scared of? I'm scared that I might like you more than you like me. Sayori. It's true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. I did this to myself. Woolen, I like you so much, I want to die. That's how I feel. And... That's enough. I don't want you to be hurt anymore. I slide my hand on her arm and squeeze her hand in my own. Remember how I said I'd always know what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Wordlessly, she nods. 
Even if you don't understand all of your own feelings, I know what you need the most right now, and that's what I'm going to give to you. Oh shit, what's the choice? Okay, this is a save. It's an instant save. Alright. What is what is the correct decision here? What is the what is the correct decision? I want to make the correct decision, chat. Troy, why would friend zone be the correct option? Follow your heart, woman. Both do the same. No chat. Retreat. I'm gonna try both. I guess I did save, I could try both. I don't really like the idea of loading and cheesing. We love her. We love her. She's so nice. We're going to say we love you. I love you. Eh? Those are my true feelings. This is true, Sayori. So there's no way you could like me more than I like you. I should have realised it sooner. But spending time with everyone at the club, making new friends, and having fun with you every day help me realise that you are truly the most important person to me. That's why I'll accept any of your burdens. As long as we continue like this every day, with you by my side, then I'll know we'll both be happy. Woolen. Ah. Oh. I'm not going to check the bloody files, you strange men. This is a heart-touching moment. We've confessed our love for her childhood friend. We chat love you, Woolen, even if you are depressed. Thank you, Mr. Float. That's very nice to say. Stop telling me to check the bloody files. All right, then. She wraps her arms tightly around me. She's very cute. Woolen, is this really okay? Yeah. I hold Saru in my arms and pull her closer. You'll never have to let go- Wait, you say to check the files? Does it like take a picture with my webcam or something? That seems like the only reason you'd want me to check the files. You'd never have to let go of me again. Mods are working overtime, you're doing a good job, man. I love you, Willen. Oh, I want to be with you together. This is me and you, Twitch chat. We love you. We all love you, each other. No check the game files. Alright, 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 alright. Alright, where did I install it? Source Filmmaker one, maybe? Steam, Steam Apps, Common... Uh, what's it called? Docky Docky? Maybe I didn't install it on here. I actually have no idea where I installed it. It's not a spoiler though. I'll have a look later. Put it up on screen. Do you really want me to check? Cheetah? E it's on my E drive, I think. People want me to check my, my game files. So if I go onto Steam, Steam Apps, Common. I actually have no idea where Doki Doki Literature Tub is. Oh, it's here. There's a lot of readmes. Not yet. It'll probably spoil stuff. I'm not going to look. There's like... I think the game's a bit bigger. How, how big is it? It was like... Oh god, it's gone up to 301 megabytes. Yeah, this, this game was like 71 kilobytes when I downloaded it. It's a small easter egg. Alright. When the next day starts, don't read chat. I want to be with you together. Me too. I feel like grip around me weaken a little bit. What is this? Sayori. I'm supposed to be happy right now. I always thought this would be the happiest moment for me. But why? Even now? Why won't the rain clouds go away? They're not going away at all, Willen. It's alright, Sayori. It might take some time for things to get better again, but no matter how long it takes, I'll be there every step of the way. That's all that matters right now. Okay. I trust you. Sayori and I slowly release each other. So, I guess that makes the festival tomorrow our first date, huh? Hee 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 hee! What are you saying? I don't want to think about those things, you know. I want everything to be the same as it's always been, even if we really are a couple. We could do emotes only. I don't know if I could handle anything more right now. You recommend putting chat- how do I put emote only? What is it? Twitch emotes only. Um, emote. Is it just slash emote only? Slash emote only. There you go. There you go. Now everyone can only speak in emotes. Apparently this is something that's being requested by everyone. 
Oh, thank you, White Cat. I don't know if Not I could much, handle... but oh, it's all oh. I have for now. So here you go, Tilda Tilda. Thank you, White Cat. Oh, moderators, I think, don't have to do it. It's really new and scary to me. I understand. We'll go at whatever pace suits you best. Hey, Woolen. Even if I get really, really sad, this is the best thing for me, right? Yeah? I don't really understand what she means by that. Are you saying this is making you feel sad, Sayori? I don't know. I don't understand what I'm feeling. I felt like a bunch of thorns when you told me you love me. But that's what I want to trust you. You know what's best for me. Yeah. I do. That's my promise. I say that, but in reality, I've never felt more uncertain when it comes to Sayori. I know that I love her, and she loves me, but I'm having as much trouble understanding her feelings as much as she is. Even though I can comfort her, I keep wondering if I should be doing something more or something different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back to the way they were. Is that what Sayori really meant by not wanting anything to change? I don't know. But I know that I'll give it anything I've got. Sayori is the most important person to me, and I'll do whatever it takes to make a happy future with her. It's the day of the festival. Of all days, I expected this to be the one where I'd be walking to school with Sayori. But she isn't answering her phone. I consider going to her house to wake her up, but I decided that's a little too much. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should be nearly complete. I managed to carry all of the cupcakes myself by carefully stacking two trays. Natsuki is already texting up a storm, but I can't respond thanks to my hands being full. Funnily enough, I probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. Happy thoughts. I'm more excited for it to be over so I can spend time with Sayori and Natsuki at the festival. But knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great as well. Woolen. You're the first one here. Thanks for being early. That's funny. I thought at least Yuri would be here by now. Monica is placing little booklets on each of the desks in the classroom. They must be the one she prepared that has all the poems we will be performing. <clears throat> in the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like and submitted it. So that's the one I'll be performing. I'm surprised you didn't bring Sayori with you. Yeah, she overslept again. That dummy. You think that on days like this, something. I say that, but I suddenly remember what Sayori told me yesterday. And I suddenly feel awful knowing it's not nearly that simple for her. I only said it because it's the way I'm used to thinking. But maybe I should have gone to wake her up after all. Aha ha! You should take a little responsibility for her, Woolen. I mean, especially after your exchange with her yesterday. You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know? <clears throat> Exchange? Monica, you know about that. Of course I do. I'm the club president, after all. But I stammer, embarrassed. Did Sari really tell her about it that quickly? Then we're a couple now. I didn't really plan on breaking it up with everyone yet. Jeez. You don't know the full story at all, so... Don't worry. I probably know a lot more than you think. Eh? Monica is being as friendly as usual, but for some reason I felt a chill down my spine after hearing that. Hey, don't you want to check out the pamphlets? They came out really nice. Yeah, sure. I grabbed one of the pamphlets laid out on the desks. Oh yeah, they really did. Something like this will definitely help people take the club more seriously. Yeah, I thought so too. I flipped through the pages. Each member's poem is neatly printed on its own page, giving it an almost professional feel. I recognised Natsuki and Yuri's poems from the ones they performed during our practice. What's this? I flipped to Sayori's poem. It's different from the one she practised. It's the one I haven't read before. Percentage sign? Get out of my head. 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 
Get out of my head before I do know, before I do what I know is best for you. Get out of my head before I listen to everything she said to me. Get out of my head before I show you how much I love you. Get out of my head before I finish writing this poem. But a poem is never actually finished. It just stops moving. Ah. What is this? Reading the poem, I get a pit in my stomach. Woolen. What's wrong? Oh, nothing. This poem feels completely different from everything else Sari has written. But more than that, I changed my mind. I'm going to get Sayori, so... Ah. Well, alright. Try not to take too long, okay? I quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself. I quicken my pace. <coughs> what was I thinking? I should have tried a little harder for Sayori. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her, or help her wake up. Even the simple gesture of walking her to school makes her feel very happy. Besides, I told her yesterday that things will be the same as they always have been. That's all she needs, and what I want to give to her. I reach Sairi's house, and knock on the door. I don't expect an answer, since she's not picking up her phone either. Like yesterday. I open the door, and let myself in. All around me are familiar faces, worn out faces, worn out faces. Bright and early for their daily races, going nowhere, going nowhere. Their tears are filling up their glasses, no expression, no expression. Hide my head, I want to drown my sorrow. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> that was, um, probably not the best timing. But, thank you, Sayori. <clears throat> Jesus Christ. He really is a heavy sleeper. I swallow. I can't believe I ended up doing this after all. Waking her up in her own house. That really is something a boyfriend would do, isn't it? In any case, it just feels right. Outside her room, I knock on her door. Sayori. Wake up, you dummy. There's no response. I really didn't want to have to enter her room like this. Isn't it kind of a breach of privacy? But she really does leave me no choice. Gently open the door.
That's the end. <clears throat> it's turning notes off off, yeah. <clears throat> I may not have been expecting all of that in a parcel. Check the files, the game just started. I'll have a look at the files. Steam, Steam apps, common. What am I looking? Happy. Th what is Happy Thoughts? Hixpeeskirts. Dot. Pung. Want me to put? Look, there's a little friend on the screen to say hello to us, look. We've got this nice image looking at us. From the developers. Yeah. There we go. The a wonderful image. I appreciate it. Um, and then there's a bunch of stuff about copyright. Oh, in the character files, she's been deleted. There is no... Sayori.car Yeah Traceback.txt Oh Alright Yep <clears throat> Yep, that was, that was a traceback What do I... Oh, oh, she's speaking to us in a text file. I'm sorry, but an uncaught exception occurred. Oh, jeez, I didn't break anything, did I? Hold on a second, I can probably fix this, I think. Actually, you know what? This is probably a lot easier if I just deleted her. She's the one who's making this so difficult. Aha, here goes nothing. Oh, yep, yeah, there she goes. There goes, there goes Sayori. She's gone somewhere. I'm not sure where she's gone. But she'll be back at another point. 
Um, this game was written in Python. All right, sweet, sweet, yeah. All right then, um, let's go back. Let's have a little look. Maybe the game's updated. It's an ordinary school day. Mornings are, are bad. I walk alone. It's about time I should meet some girls, but I have no motivation. <coughs> I'm perfectly content just getting by, spending my free time on games and anime. The school day is as ordinary as ever. I stare blankly at a wall. Oh, 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 yeah, hello. Hi, hello. <clears throat> oh my goodness. HCHR isn't extension recognised by Python. Huh. Oh my goodness. I totally didn't expect to see you here. You hope auto empty on my trash isn't on. No. It's been a while, right? Ah. Yeah, it has. Monica smiles sweetly. This text, the text changes? We do know each other, but we've rarely talked. She's probably the most popular girl. I'm looking for supplies for my club. Do you know if there's any construction paper in here? Or markers? I guess you could check the closet. You're in the debate club, right? Aha! About that. I quit the debate club. I can't stand the politics. Skip will be ungrayed out at the bottom where text is the same and it's safe to skip. What do you mean? Oh, as in if it's new text, it'll be greyed out. If it's old text, it'll just say skip. Alright. In that case, what club did you decide to join? Nope. Oh. Actually, I'm starting a new one. A literature club. Literature. That sounds kind of dull. How many members do you have? Uh, ha 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 ha! There's only three of us. It's really hard to find new members for something that sounds so boring. There's three of you. Literature can be anything. One of my members even keeps a manga collection in the club room. Happy you suggested your game. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the lovely game suggest. Wait, really? It's funny, right? She always insists that manga is literature too. She's not wrong, I guess, and a member's a member. Then I could just say she. Hmm. Hey, Wallen. Are you still looking for a club? I mean, I guess so. There's only chance you could do me a big favour. I won't ask you to join, but if you at least could visit my club, it would make me very happy. Please? Well, I have no reason to refuse. How much longer is left in the game if I'm just going to do this extra bit? Does it keep going on and on and on and on? Can I finish it within the next, like, half an hour, you reckon? Or is it going to take, like, another two hours? Besides, how could I ever refuse someone like Monica? Sure. I guess I could check it out. Good night. Ah, awesome. You're really sweet, Willen. You know that. It's nothing, really. Shall we go, then? I'll look for the materials another time. You're important. No, it's still some hours. You reckon? Go to bed, Willen. Is the game really not over? Another two hours? Excuse me, really? Oh. I'm not gonna sit here and go through all the endings. I think that kind of defeats the purpose of playing through it. If you go through and nitpick and delete files to try and get the perfect ending, it kind of defeats the purpose of it, doesn't it? Finish the stream. I, if it's another two hours, it's not. If it's like half an hour, I can do it, but if it's like two hours, I think everyone- Like, I have a lot of Europeans watching, and it's currently probably like 1am where they are. There's about two hours left, it's long. Even if I do skips and stuff. I sold my soul to Monica. I could just scream- I just could just scream? I could just stream this tomorrow, you reckon? Yeah, it's a good place to stop. Alright. There's only two endings, and at this point you can only get one. Alright, so... It will take about an hour and a half, even if you do skip old text. Yeah, okay, well, the stream's gone on for about three and a half hours. It's currently gone midnight. It's probably about gone 1am for Europeans. So, what I'm going to- I'm assuming I can save. I'm going to save for tonight. Oh, great, there go all my save files. Ha ha! Ha ha ha! Ha ha! Um, alright, um... Yeah, I'm going to end it for tonight. Tomorrow is Monday, so that means we play games with our friends. Who we love. We love our friends. Ha ha! Um, I don't know what we're playing. We might play TF2. We managed to fix the Minecraft servers. We might play that. I don't know. Let me know on the Discord. But I'm going to go in the stream and watch nice happy things like Northern Lion play Slay the Spire. That'll be fun. Ha 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 